ABC Sports proudly presents Game 3 in our exclusive coverage of the Bowl Championship Series. Live pictures on the first Monday of 2005, the massive Louisiana Superdome here in New Orleans. Bubbling inside a sellout crowd of over 75,000. The French Quarter colored orange all week, highlighted by maroon from the Hokie faithful and blue from the Tiger fans. The 2005 Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC, 10 and 2 Atlantic Coast Conference champion Virginia Tech, 12 and 0 number three Southeastern Conference champion Auburn. Well, good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico, welcome to the penultimate game of this college football season. It all wraps up tomorrow night. Number one USC, number two Oklahoma in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Auburn feels it should be there. 12 and 0 in the always tough Southeastern Conference usually gets you to the championship game, but it won't. And here's why: all the measuring sticks used, the Associated Press media poll, the coaches poll, and the computers say Auburn is the third best of these three teams. Auburn says they are the best. Are they? Well, watch the next two nights and decide for yourself. But know this, if the Auburn players come out tonight and win the game, they can walk out of the Superdome and say, we were the best team in 2004, and nobody will be able to take that away from them. Remember, Auburn fans, Virginia Tech is good. Tommy Tupperville told me about an hour ago, this may be the best team we've played all year. Tim Grant, Terry Bowden, and Susie Schuster join me on the broadcast. They'll be with us here in a couple of minutes. Minutes away from the 71st Nokia Sugar Bowl, Auburn undefeated Virginia Tech has won its last eight. In their inaugural year in the Atlantic Coast Conference, they were champions and no stranger to the postseason stage. But by their veteran head coach, Frank Beamer, the Virginia Tech Hokies set to return to the Sugar Bowl field for the third time. They played here in 95 in 2000 with Michael Vick. And their fans have come from Virginia here in 2005. To watch Virginia Tech, led by their great defensive star, Darrell Tapp, try to knock off one of the best teams in the land of the Auburn Tigers. Auburn's never played in a bowl championship series game until now. And the SEC champions take to the floor of the dome, locked arm in arm as they have been here through the balance of the season. Coach Tommy Tupperville. He's with our sideline reporter, Susie Schuster. Hey, Mike, thank you very much. I know you're thrilled to be here at the Sugar Bowl, but in your heart and mind and in the heart and minds of your players, are you playing for the national title? Well, we've got a shot. We've got to play well. We're playing against a good football team. I just hope people watch us tonight and see how well we play. We might not play like the number one team, but I hope we do. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Susie, thank you. Auburn against Virginia Tech, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Kickoff next from New Orleans. Susie Schuster with Frank Beamer. All right, Mike, thanks. You played for the national title on this very field in 2000. But tonight here, you said that this is the most important game in Virginia Tech history. Why is that? Well, I think uh, just going into the ACC, representing the great conference like the ACC, uh, the atmosphere here couldn't be better. It's going to be loud. Auburn brought their guys. We brought our guys. So uh, I think this is one of those uh, games that uh, makes a statement for the future. How do you plan on shutting down that Auburn run? Well, you just got to get to the football. You know, they got two great running backs, but they got other good weapons. That's what makes it tough, stopping those two running backs. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Good luck tonight. Mike? Okay, Susie, thank you. Frank Beamer, veteran coach experience. Mike Emo is going to go back and get the kick. Let's let you soak up the atmosphere in here. From Blacksburg and from the plains of Alabama, they've come to have a party here on Bourbon Street. Watch their two teams. Auburn 12 0, Virginia Tech 10 2. The Tigers won the toss, deferred the option of the second half. So Virginia Tech will receive the opening kickoff. And Philip Yost will boot it away. Nobody's ever gone 13 and 0 and not been a national champion. 
Those thoughts must be kept away. Auburn has to focus on the target, and that's Virginia Tech, a team that can play with anyone. Off we go in the 2005 Nokia Sugar Bowl. Deep pick, no return from Emo. And Virginia Tech will start from its own 20. Their senior quarterback starting his final game in the maroon and orange. Brian Randall, Winsboro, Virginia, Bruton High School, ACC Player of the Year. They try to take the job from Brian Randall a couple of different times. Michael Vick's brother Marcus, and we'll detail why he's no longer with the program this season, although he will be back for next year. Grant Knoll earlier. But every time they went somewhere else, number three was there. He's emerged into a great leader, a steady head. He's a very smart player. Drive starts from the 20 with play action pass. Randall has good running ability. And gets seven to the 27, tripped up by Travis Williams, the outstanding Auburn middle linebacker. Here are the ball handlers for Virginia Tech on the Nokia starting lineups. We talk about Mike Emo. He's going to alternate series as the running back with Cedric Humes. Two freshman receivers average 18 a catch. A lot of talent on this team and good tight ends as well with Jeff King. Up front, the two tackles, Martin and Dunn, three-year starters. But that center, Will Montgomery, a former walk-on, has turned into an anchor for a good rushing team. 190 yards per game on the ground. And three. They fake the reverse to Clowney. Emo, the running back, is a yard shy of the first down. He picked up two. As mentioned, stingiest defense to score on in the nation, the Auburn Tigers. What do they do? Speed, speed, more speed. Defensive end, Jay Ratliff last year. Movement to defensive tackle. He and TJ Jackson tough to move. Travis Williams already made a play. Top tackler, first team all SEC. Braves in for the injured Antarius Williams, a guy to watch tonight. And Carlos Rogers, you saw him on the corner. First team All-American, won the Thorpe Award. Best defensive back in the nation. Third and one, and a quick throw to Royal. The freshman hangs on for the first down to the 32-yard line. Will Herring, the safety, tackled the true freshman who was the best player in high school football in Virginia last year. Trying to get the tight ends involved early, Mike. They haven't been open. They've been taken away by this defensive unit. So they've had to go elsewhere. This is just a smash route. And then they send Royal out to the outside. Tight end was covered. That's where he wanted to go first. That was his first read. Virginia Tech's offense is balanced. More balanced when they can run so they can set up play action passes downfield. When they can do that, life is good. There is a play action pass. It is downfield. It's for Josh Hyman. Incomplete. Step for step, Montavis Pitts. The other corner, and Terry, that's the corner they'll throw at tonight in all likelihood. Well, Carlos Rogers on the other side. He's the best cornerback in the land, according to Jim Thorpe voters. So you go against Montavis Pitts. He's got the speed, but he doesn't have the experience right here. They get inside on him. He puts his hand on him, gets away with it. But he stays close enough to make him overthrow the ball. Terry, let me say this, though. Virginia Tech's game plan doesn't say anything about going away from Carlos Rogers. Instead, it says locate him, respect him, but then execute. We're not going to go away from him. There he is, 14, 6'1", senior out of Augusta, Georgia. Second and 10, Emo on the run. And the junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. A gain of about five. Travis Williams, second tackle. Look, third and five coming up, Tim. I'm going to tell you right now, with Emo being 5'7 and so little, Auburn's game plan tonight is going to be finding Emo. <laughs> I mean, he hides behind those big guys. You can't find them. It's finding Emo, not finding Nemo. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I stood up next to him in the, in the dressing room when we were at their stadium, and I'm going to tell you, 5'7 is uh, awful generous. Because I'm 5'5. Five, five. <laughs> <laughs> They need to get to the 43 to keep the drive alive. Auburn, a good third down pass rushing team. 75 McClubber coming in, sends Randall out, and he's brought down. It'll be no game, not a sack. Quinton Grooves comes up with the tackle.
Watch the end of this. And, fellas, Terry, how about this? You think when he gets through, they've got a spy on him. You think he's not trying to get that ball out to Emo? He was looking, and he almost threw it. I tell you, they put those two young defensive ends in, though. McGlover, McGlover, and Grooves, I'm telling you, it's not going to be. Somebody's going to be sacked pretty quick. Vinny Burns, who is from New Orleans, played his first high school football game in this building, plays his last collegiate game in here. He's the left-footed punter for the Hokies. Cadillac is waiting. Carnell Williams, the best of the Tigers, takes it on the bounce of the 18. Picks up one block and a couple more, and Cadillac takes it out to the 26-yard line. Somebody else, that ball may have been inside the 15 or inside the 10. Instead, the kick was 43, the return was 8. Auburn takes the field when we come back at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Tigers take the field, first time on offense from their own 26. Pretty good offense, this Auburn bunch. Most yards per game in the Southeastern Conference. Only Florida scored more points. Auburn averaged 33 a game, led by the senior Jason Campbell. A whole backfield that will be in the NFL draft on day one come this April. Play action pass, first down, down the middle for the tight end. Hauled in by Cooper Wallace to the 40 yard line. 35, and Vincent Fuller made the tackle. This is all about respect for the running backs. There's the two best backs faked up the middle. The linebackers don't get deep enough. There's the seam route by the tight end Cooper Wallace. It's all because they're so fearful of those great backs. You saw it right there. Great backs open up the passing game. And certainly one of the keys was a very basic defense by Virginia Tech. They were in just a basic zone. They threw it over the linebacker under the safety bingo. Three wide receivers, no tight end after that 35-yard pickup. Second longest of the year for Wallace. And the give to Ronnie Brown up the middle. Ronnie Brown still going. First and goal for the Tigers. Auburn punches you in the mouth early to see if you can take it. They've scored on the first possession nine times in 12 games. Then they try to bury you by halftime. They've outscored opponents 215 to 39. If you look at this, this is how they do it. They'll pass, they'll come back, they'll use Williams, they'll use Brown. They mix things up. They dare you to stop them. Brown comes out. Williams the lone back, two tight ends in. What a start for the Tigers. Toss to Williams. Loss of a yard. Jimmy Williams, no relation, comes up from his corner, makes the start. Let's take a look at the Nokia starting lineups with the quarterback. Jason Campbell, Taylorsville, Mississippi, Taylorsville High School, SEC Offensive Player of the Year. 32nd consecutive start. Those career numbers improved, as Terry alluded to in the open. That completion percentage up near 70 this year. Second and goal after the loss of a yard. Quick hitter with Brown tries to find some room inside. This Virginia Tech defense good in the red zone. Stiffening it a bit. Daryl Tapp made the tackle. So as we breeze through these Auburn lineups, the ball handlers, we've already seen how dynamic they can be with Williams and Brown. But the other guys, don't forget them. We haven't even talked about the receivers yet. Up front, all except the center, over 300 pounds and over 6'3". Marcus McNeil, the big tackle, a great block on that long run by Brown. 6'9", 332. First team all-conference might be headed to the NFL early after this game. They go five wide. The one closest to you is Ronnie Brown, the running back. Virginia Tech trying to identify everyone. Campbell pressure just puts it up for grabs and out of the back of the end zone. The pressure of Virginia Tech, the difference there, as Nolan Bruchette, the sophomore, forces a fourth down. But it shows you the maturity of Campbell. He's got a dad as a coach. 
Al Borges comes in as offensive coordinator. He feels the pressure. Rather than take the sack, he throws it away. That is a brilliant play. Some of your best passes are incompletions. Just give yourself the chance to get the field goal. And considering how good Auburn started to move the ball downfield, this is a big plus for Virginia Tech to hold them for a field goal attempt right here after that big start by the Auburn Tigers. John Vaughn only tried 12 field goals this year, made nine of them. From 23 yards, the sophomore to Brentwood, Tennessee, puts the first points on the board. So another opening drive, another score for Auburn. It was smelling like seven after the first two plays went for more than 30 yards. Tech tightens in the red zone. Auburn, 3 nothing. Quarter one from the Superdome in New Orleans. Certainly everybody in this town is ready. I'll tell you, fellas, it's going to be interesting, I think, right now to see if Virginia Tech can come back now and show some composure. They took a shot in the mouth. Auburn moved it right down for them, got the three points. Now let's see what the offense can do, see if they can get back into a rhythm. I think the key to get Virginia Tech, they've got to stay balanced on offense. Philip Yost, a returnable kick for Eddie Royal from the three. Great speed. The freshman Eddie Royal. Kicker across midfield and great field position for the Hokies. Out of bounds at the 49. I'd say that's responding after taking a shot to the face. A return of 48, his longest of the season. And then Royals a true freshman. He's really been one of the difference makers on this team. Great runner, great speed, most explosive big play guy on the team right here. Outruns everybody. Carlos Rogers is one guy at the very end of the play. He's probably not going to outrun made the tackle. Well, it's the old American that didn't give up on it. Yes, Took a good too. pursuit angle to get to him. Brandon Manning threw a nice block to free Royal and take a break. Mike Emo the tailback. The option looks for the first time with a flag down. Emo tries to cut back. Uh -uh. Not against this very fast Auburn defense. Dick Honigs, our referee, 41 years of officiating the high school and college level. Final game here tonight. Holding number 72 in the offense. 10 yards, repeat first down. Take a look at some of the offensive leaders for Virginia Tech, and this has been a potent offense. We told you about Brian Randall. He's most dangerous outside the pocket with his mobility and escapability. Mike Emo. He's off to a little bit of a slow start here, but remember, he didn't play the last three games because of a hamstring. Eddie Royal, one of those young, talented freshmen who's made an impact this year. Now they've got to find their rhythm, mix things up, and start putting this defense of Auburn on its heels. Ten-yard penalty, Tim, makes it first and 20. Out of the shotgun, they'll put it in the belly of that little running back, Emo. Takes it to the 45-yard line. He was suspended for the first three games. Really, over the last third of the season, has been slowed by a hamstring injury. Still, he's gained 700 yards this year. And I think those straight-ahead runs where you get locked up on the blocks and get by the defenders quickly are much better than those stretched-out wide plays when you got a team of great speed and quickness. You don't want to go east and west, go north and south, pop through there quickly. You know, Mike, to follow up what you're talking about, playing half the season, and then Hume's got off to a slow start. They've never really had the two together until tonight. You see Cedric. As the night goes on, this is second and 15. A screen to Emo. Uh, nowhere. Kevin Sears, a sophomore out of Russellville, Alabama, whose brother Aaron is an offensive lineman for the Tennessee Volunteers. Loss of eight. Sears right here has to fill in, come in for Antarius Williams, who was out injured three or four games ago, makes a great play there, recognizing the flare, getting penetration for the, for the loss. So the great kick return, guys, gets him out to midfield, and now they've lost a dozen yards with the penalty and that play by Sears, and Tommy Tupperville's defense loves this. Third and 23, 75 with Clover, 54 Groves, they're ready to pass rush on those defensive ends. throws intercepted by junior rose green the safety takes it into virginia tech territory and to the 30-yard line
Ryan Randall intercepted just once in the last seven games. A mistake there. Right here, look at the inside receiver. Tries to work over top. It's a poorly thrown ball. If you throw it over the top, you got a chance. Ryan Randall, a very unusual throw for him. He's been so consistent. Of course, Junior Rose Green, this guy has been five interceptions for the year. He's their leading interceptor for the team. I'm not sure you don't just run the draw. In 42 third and plus tens this year, there have only been three first downs. That might be a one to throw the run the draw and play field position a little more. He's a big fan of the A team. Mr. T has been Mr. <laughs> INT for the Tigers this year. Arnell Williams comes to have a word with Jason Campbell before first and ten. Williams with a couple of blocks cannot get to the outside. Daryl Tapp and James Anderson able to chase him down. We still have to tell you about the players who line up on this side for Frank Beaver's team a very solid group that Tim is going to be tested here with Auburn taking over at the plus 30. Well there's no question about that Mike we told you this is a team that has scored a lot of points in the first half as a matter of fact they've outscored opponents 215 to 39 in the first half so they give you that real big punch early to see if you can take it and I want to tell you right now they're just overpowering Virginia Tech this Auburn team is extremely extremely talented. Fullback Jake Slaughter lines up ahead of Parnell Williams. Campbell throws. We have a whistle, so no play here. As Ben Obamanu came up with the reception. Illegal procedure against Auburn. And Obamanu exchanging some words with the tech corner, Jimmy Williams. Both start number eight on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Cooper Wallace, the tight end. Some of that is emotion still early in the ball game. Guys are antsy. Want to jump across that line. Sometimes emotion gets in the way of concentration. And Cooper Wallace, a junior, should know better, but he jumped. There he is right here. There's Cooper Wallace. You see him flinch right there. As soon as they stem, the defensive line moved down, and he flinched. One thing about these two backs, they put them in so many places. Ronnie Brown's now the slot receiver. Jason Campbell screens it to Cardell Williams, and Cadillac is stopped in his tracks. Wow. Vince Hall is the middle linebacker, second leading tackler on this team. The redshirt freshman forces third down. Let's introduce you to these Virginia Tech defensive players. Probably the standout guys up front are Jim Davis, 95, a defensive tackle, and Daryl Tapp, first team all ACC. His nickname's Fast Forward. That's the only speed he knows. Paul McKee and Anderson, the linebackers. Mikel led this team in tackles this year. Williams and Griffin changed positions this year. They've been important. Eric Green starts his 22nd and final game for Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, with Frank Beamer the last 24 years. Third and 16. Campbell throws on the run to Courtney Taylor. First and 10 for the Tigers inside the 50. Post shield pattern. You had Abumanu out there with Courtney Taylor. Both ran a post, one over top, one underneath. Just split the defender. And by coming to the line, watch this. Here both guys come down like this and just shield each other underneath. And the ball's waiting for him by Campbell. Campbell did a good job too of not trying to scramble for five or six yards sitting behind the line of scrimmage and waiting for the route to come open also. Williams lines up as a receiver Brown next to Campbell in the shotgun quarterback draw for Jason Campbell. Up down by Jim Davis the second team all ACC performer who missed all the 2003 tour pectoral muscle playing golf who said golf's not a contact sport. <laughs> Second down coming up. I'd say he's swinging hard. He was. <laughs> you saw Jason Campbell run a designated quarterback draw. They did that a lot more in the SEC championship game against Tennessee. But they don't run him. He's got the ability to run, but they don't run him like Brandon, Brandon, uh, Randall, Brian Randall for Virginia Tech. Second and ten, fake the toss. Campbell looking to the back of the end zone. And once again, Tim, he threw it out of the end zone, just like he did on the third down. Penalty markers down. Looks like this one's going to be against the Hokies. 
Watch, watch the tight end Cooper Wallace here as we fake it. Watch him trying to get out for a pass. That's what happens when a defender knows he's got to keep him from running a route, but has let him get away from him, so he just grabs cloth, and that's going to be defensive holding. Jason Lawless, the defensive end. Holding an eligible receiver by the defense. Half the distance, automatic first down. I mean, the problem is you've got to guard the run for these great running backs. Then you've also got to jump back and cover the pass. A lot of this is about great running backs getting your attention, and then, oh, yeah, I've got to cover that receiver, too, and you can't do it both. Bud Foster's team on the ropes here. Auburn has moved the ball with ease in the first two drives. First and goal, here comes Cadillac. Williams pushes it forward, out to about the four-yard line. Carnell Williams at 210 pounds. He's not a scat back at all. Some people are talking about him at the next level as a third down back. He is not afraid to put his pads down and drive, drive, drive. Man, taking the worst of that hit. Well, I think one of the best things he does is short yardage. He's their best short yardage runner. One guy cannot bring him down. He's so powerful and low, you can't find a piece of him to grab a hold of. So he's got great breakaway ability, but he's such a great short yardage back. This guy should have had him in the backfield, but he gets to the second man. Got a great block by Slaughter, the fullback. He reminds me of Clinton Portis, but he's shaking up a little bit. Second and goal. Line up and run it. Ronnie Brown. Stopped a yard shy. The graduated senior. Somebody's helmet flew off. I hope it wasn't a head in it. It's big old Marcus McNeil. I want to see who's tall enough to get their head up there to knock his head off. Continue to look at Williams there on the sideline while Brown stays in here. But no drop off there. Absolutely not. But two different styles, certainly. And now you've got 234 pounds carrying the ball. Third and goal. To Brown. Trying to follow his fullback. Denied. What a surge by that Virginia Tech defense. Vincent Fuller. Ends up making the tackle, but a good surge by Jim Davis and company. Bring us to another field goal attempt, perhaps. All right, coach, you make the call. I kick a field goal. Fourth and two, I kick a field goal. It's a little bit long, but I would kick it because I think you need to put points down here. You've had things going. Let's keep it consistently going. That play was made by Jim Davis. Submarine caught him in the backfield, eliminated the blocker. Big Tommy Tuberville decision. And Frank Beamer's looking across the field to see what Tommy's going to do. Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, talking with Tommy about what they're going to do. They kept the offensive personnel out to go. They'll talk about it during this timeout. 114 left in the first. Mike Tirico, Tim Brandt, Terry Bowden, Susie Schuster, Auburn 3-0. They've dominated playing, guys. They're still going to go for it here on fourth down. They're loading up heavy. They've got the fullback slaughter back in the ball game. Could be trying to pull them off, though, to get better field goal. There. Ronnie Brown, the back behind the fullback slaughter. Good, Good call, Terry. Coach. Good call. Well, I... That's what they've done. And Campbell takes another timeout. They call that purple. They line up, and if somebody comes across, they've got a free play, they throw the fade. All right. Now, here's what... You're thinking the same thing I'm thinking, which well, surprises take, me. Well, I take the penalty. And they take two timeouts instead of taking the penalty to back them up. We'll see what decision they make here as Jason Campbell plays the play clock game. This is a victory for Virginia Tech, regardless if he makes it or not. It's from 23, this one from 19. Tough angle, he bangs it through, and the Tigers lead 6-0. And I want to say that's a wasted timeout because the two-yard line left hash I don't get is it. a very difficult field goal. Usually, take the delay a game, take the five yards. The seven-yard line is a much better angle. They really should not have wasted their timeout if they were going to kick the ball. If they're going to go for it, you take your timeout. Unusual there. Let's see if they need that timeout down the road. 
Uh, six nothing for Tommy Tuberville's team. What a year! And 13 months ago, the thought of this team being undefeated and being led by that man was the most unlikely story in college football. Take it back that Auburn was six and five. That game that stops the state against Alabama was a few days away, November 2003. The then president of Auburn, William Walker, and the athletic director David Housel boarded the plane of a trustee member, influential booster Bobby Louder. They went to Louisville, met with their head coach uh, Bobby Petrino, who was at Auburn as Tuberville's offensive coordinator the year before. They offered Petrino Tuberville's job. Tommy didn't know about it until word of the clandestine get-together got out. That started a torrent, a rush of ill feelings. The fans down on the plains rallied around Tuberville. The team rallied around its coach. They beat Alabama, beat Wisconsin in the bowl game. Tuberville went from hot seat to the seat of power. He became the fans' man. And in the ensuing year, the school's president has been replaced. Athletic directors retiring. Last week, the guy who was in trouble, Tommy Tuberville, signed a huge contract extension worth $60 million with a $7 million buyout. One of the most interesting stories in coaching in a long time. Eddie Royal, good kick return last time, takes this one out to the 29-yard line. Mike, I think what's interesting about that is outgoing athletic director David Housel was on that plane, and he's quoted as saying if he could undo anything in his entire life and has been a wonderful life, he would undo that ill-fated plane trip to Louisville. Terry, you've been through this. You've had a chance to talk with Tommy. How's he doing? You know, it was devastating for him and his family. For something you've worked for all your life, and to have it almost taken away from you, it's it's incredible. But he, he got a second chance, and an incredible thing happened. The team rallied around him. The fans rallied around him. And because of that togetherness, they went undefeated. Now he's got this incredible contract, $7 million bucks. But more importantly, he's got security, and now he's in control of his football program. And they have performed great on the field. First down for David Clowney, the receiver. The pass is incomplete. You know, just to finish the thought on Tuberville, he handled it with great aplomb. He joked at a speech in Atlanta this year, hey, about a year ago this time, I was ready to send out my application to be a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> Still in his office, he's got the 15,000 emails from the people who said, hey, we support you, coach. We're behind you. You know, I know I've known Tommy for a long time. I've never seen him more relaxed, I agree. more comfortable with him and his position. I, really, he is a relaxed man now, like the way the world's taking off. I agree. His He's got seven million reasons to be that way. <laughs> Second down, and the run for Cedric Humes, his first carry tonight, and only gains a yard. You can be relaxed when you got a big contract Amen. and defensive players like this. They are doing a great job. Why the wind blowing? One more. Call him up. Now let's go. Oh. That was pregame. There was no more relaxed person <laughs> on the field. I was talking to him, talking to his mom. What was that tune he was whistling? <laughs> Third and eight for a Virginia Tech offense that is stuck in neutral tonight. I think it was, I'm in the money. I'm in. <laughs> Randall, caught by Humes. Big run for a much-needed Tech first down across the 40-yard line. Derek Graves chases him down. That wasn't a game-changing performance, but a much-needed one. Frank Beamer's offense needs to find something here to settle down. And they need to play the field position game a little bit, too. Don't do something crazy. They've played the entire game on their side of the 50. They need to get this thing down there where they can play defense if they have to. Final play of the first quarter. Randall takes off to run. And he was barred from climbing through the hole. Just a gain of a couple of yards. It was shut down by Wayne Dickens up front of that defensive line. Through one quarter, Auburn, a great chance to be up 14-0. Virginia Tech's red zone defense keeps it to six. Fifth time Auburn's played in the Sugar Bowl. Third time in 15 years that the Virginia Tech fans have filled the French Quarter. And they were here in great force throughout the week. Quarter number two begins second and eight for Virginia Tech. Out of the shotgun, their quarterback, Brian Randall. Good throw on the run to David Clowney. Sophomore to Delray Beach, Florida with great speed in front of Montavis Pitts. Back-to-back -back first downs on this drive. 
Mike Tirico, Tim Brandt, Terry Bowden, Susie Schuster. Second to last game of the year. The ADT National Championship trophy given out tomorrow night when USC and Oklahoma meet in the FedEx Orange Bowl here on ABC. Auburn trying to prove to many that they deserve to be with those teams. We've got a tough opponent in Virginia Tech tonight. Well, Virginia Tech has the number one scoring offense in the ACC. Not Miami, not Florida State, not Maryland or Virginia. It's Virginia Tech. And that first down, your third of the game, I think, helps them mentally. Cedric Humes now in the game at the running back. Humes trying to keep the pile going, but he gets a loss of yardage instead of no gain. And some pushing after the play is done. Wayne Dickens made the tackle. Not getting a good mark either. I thought there was some forward progress there. Both these teams are so good at playing first down and keeping people minimized on first down so they've got long yardage. After that, after every down, if you stop first down, every other down is in the defense's advantage because they know mostly what the offense has to do second long and third and long. We've already seen Mike Emo for Frank Beamer. See what Frank's doing? He's telling that official that ball should be up by the original yeah. line of scrimmage. That should not have been a loss. Cedric Hughes has been in the backfield most of this drive. Second and a dozen. Gets a five-man rush. Randall sets his feet, goes deep for Josh Hyman, who catches it but out of bounds. Easy call, well called. Incomplete against this very difficult Auburn defense. Yep, Gene Chiswick, finalist for the Royals Award, goes to the best assistant coach in the land. His pass is hauled in, but nowhere to go for Justin Harper. Timmy Circle, Travis Williams for you. Boy, that guy is such a disruptor on this defense. Well, he is, Mike, and, and the key is because of his size, as Terry says, he's only 6'1", 2'12". You know, he tries to avoid blockers like a ball carrier tries to avoid tacklers. And he does it with his speed, and he disrupts. And he reminds me of Sam Mills. Remember Sam oh, yeah. Mills? Yeah. You know, that same type of mentality, really tough, very quick, and extremely smart. Yeah, Gene Chiswick feels he's the most underrated linebacker, not only in the SEC, maybe in the country. And we'll talk about later, it's the old Miami Jimmy Johnson theory of defensive football. And he burns, set to kick. Carnell Williams, arm up for a fair catch, and he hauls it in at the 15. We saw Williams come out earlier after he was hit hard. He was okay, able to track down that punt. Long field for Auburn. A lot of yapping here in the first 17 minutes. Welcome back to the Sugar Bowl. Just a Virginia Tech update. Josh Morgan, their true freshman split end, suffered an AC sprained shoulder. He was taped up. He's going to go back into the game. Now watch for Bud Foster talking to his secondary, telling Eric Green, Jimmy Williams, Vincent Fuller, shore up that Auburn air attack, Mike. All right, Suze, thank you. Interesting, Mike, because Bud's really had him in zone most of the game. They've hurt him more with the run. Nobody's gotten deep. We'll see what they do here. Play action pass. They look deep. Had to come back underneath for Carnell Williams. Pass was incomplete. And it'll bring up second down. And you think the way Virginia Tech's been hurt, the perimeter, they've not been hurt in the perimeter passing game. The outside receivers, the deep vertical routes outside, they hit a seam route to the tight end, and they've run the ball underneath. So the, the, the zone defense with the secondary is not what's hurting them. It's just stopping that run. Hey, listen, the bottom line is this. Auburn's gotten down to the six. They've gotten down to the one. They had to settle for field goals. Virginia Tech's in good shape here. Second and ten. Campbell adjusts the play. Play clock down to six. It's an off in time. And Carnell Williams dances in the hole. Good play to bring him down before Williams can escape into the secondary. Third down coming up, Nolan Bruchette's second tackle. Mm. Five receivers, Campbell pressure, brought down at the five. Nolan Bruchette, the star on that series.
Now, this is the old pressure 80 defense. Everybody was covered. Jason Campbell has nobody to throw to, and the pressure's going to get to him, mainly because, not because there were too many rushers, but because there was absolutely nobody open against the Virginia Tech defense. Burchett came through untouched, Terry. Nobody even blocked him. Always be careful when you punt against Virginia Tech. They've made punt block a science. Cody Bliss able to get this one away. Well protected. Nice high hanging pick. Should Johnson, a senior, fields it at the 40, reverses it to Mike Emo. Penalty marker down as Emo is off to the races. Took it out to the 35 with a flag back where the handoff Boy, occurred. And I'll tell you, it's close That's because tough. it was Jimmy Williams, and it was really, really a close call. He reverse. did everything he could not to clip. He exactly saw the right. Guy. Exactly I'm right. I managed to see the replay. He knew it was going to be a clip. He did it wrong. And that'll drive Frank Beamer nuts because they take such great pride in their special teams. Push in the back on the return, number two, 10 yards. Oh, I don't first know. Down. Erasing a 26 yard return. So instead of being around the Auburn 30, Virginia Tech's going to start back at its own 24. All right, now watch the left side of the screen right there. There's the push in the back he's talking about. It draws the flag. He was extended. The arms were out. Number two, Jimmy Williams' flag. Penalty cost Virginia Tech 41 yards. Be right back. Great look at the Riverwalk. Just a block or so away from the mighty Mississippi. Six nothing here, 30th time. The Nokia Sugar Bowl has been contested in this uh, massive building. The Louisiana Superdome used to be outside at Tulane Stadium. So after the penalty on the puck return, the drive starts to the 24. Randall Lewis tight end. Jeff King with the catch. Part of the game plan by Virginia Tech. They want to get the tight ends involved. They've already run the tight end pass two or three times. Auburn's taken it away. This is the first catch by a Virginia Tech tight end tonight, and this is a major, major part of their game plan. And here they go, option with Randall and pick up the first down out at the 37 yard line. Tim, it's a big part. Get the tight end going in the option game. Then line up and run between the tackles. When this offense is good, they keep you off balance. And if they have that success with a tight end, that seems to set up everything they do because the tight ends are such a big part of their game. They go two tights, they go three tights, everything inside because they can run the run the ball or pass it off of that formation. I tell you what made that option play so successful though compared to the last time it was a downhill option. Brian Randall immediately was working downhill with the ball and not sideways not east and west. After a nine yard run takes longest of the night. Randall back to the air and complete to Josh Hyman the red shirt freshman receiver Montavis Pitts made the tackle. These receivers are very young and they were a little bit wide eyed pregame. It's a big stage for these youngsters. Right here, he takes Montavis Pitts, puts him deep, and gets the coverage. Quite often, a young defender like Montavis Pitts will play too soft and not give the type of tight coverage that you need. But I like the misdirection. You take the misdirection, and a fast defense will run the wrong way and have too far to recover. That's really what made that play so successful. Short passing effective for the senior Randall, ACC Player of the Year. The short throw. David Clowney tries to make a play on the edge. And Clowney picks up a first down as Carlos Rogers takes him down at about the 35 yard line. Here we go, Mike. They're starting to get the rhythm. They're starting to mix things up. They're starting to move the ball effectively. Once again, you have the tight end inside. So you bring Clowney back behind the tight end. Very effective. But you make the point about how young they are. First or second year players combined for 77 catches and 11 touchdowns this year for Virginia Tech. And you know what, guys? It took them a while. It took them a while to kind of emerge. This team started two and two, then ran through the ACC in their first year, eight consecutive wins, closing it with the game Tim told you about a moment ago, winning in the Orange Bowl against Miami. Fake the reverse to Royal, looking deep downfield for Josh Hyman. First and goal. One more against Montavis Pitts.
Boy, fake the reverse. Here's your guy going down here, but the play's made because you're faking the reverse and you're getting guys down in the two deep. They're playing two deep, five under. Now watch, here's the fake of the reverse. Bam! Throw it between the safety and the corner. Perfectly thrown. Hyman makes the catch. Virginia Tech's in business. Randall, four of four on the drive. Mike Emo, shoulder down. Legs stopped by that Auburn front. We'll have second down coming up. I'll tell you, the toughest thing to do is to run for a touchdown against Auburn. They've only given up four rushing touchdowns this year, but three of them were in the SEC championship for 53 quarters. They only gave up one touchdown during the regular season running the football. We'll see how it goes here, because one thing Virginia Tech is good at is running the football inside the red zone. Well, that's all well and good, but don't forget Virginia Tech. That's right. Number one scoring offense in the ACC. This is where they want to run the ball to now. Three tight ends for Tech. Second and goal, Randall looking to throw back to the other side. Fire is incomplete. That is a well-schooled Auburn team. They wanted to get Jared Mazetta, the tight end, coming back to the other side of the field from where the players were going. Dragged in. But they worked on it in practice all week, sure. and it worked out when it counted. All right, watch the tight end on the right side. You'll see him roll wide, we call this, as he'll fake it up. They'll fake the tight end on the H-back. The tight end right behind him will slide, and we'll come right down. Watch the tight end come right down the middle. We watched Virginia Tech practice this all week, but we watched Auburn practice against it all week. It was a case of a good play called, but good defense. Third and goal. Randall, quarterback, draw. Sears. Now I would go for it, Mike. I'm Virginia Tech, and it's down by the goal line. I'd go for it. And I'd load up heavy, baby. I'd bring in all three tight ends. I'd get my splits. He's most dangerous when he's running the football, but I'm telling you, that was an outstanding play by Sears to tag him and push him the other way. Offensive personnel on the field set to try to go for it on fourth and goal. Auburn trying to get timeout, and they do. I tell you, this is what Auburn does best against what Virginia Tech does best. Auburn, that stop the run in the red zone and run in the red zone. Tigers out of timeouts. Come back for fourth and goal from less than a yard away. Virginia Tech trying to take the lead. Auburn six snaps inside the 10, no touchdowns. This is Tech's third snap inside the 10. They're trying to get the game's first touchdown. Mike, with the speed of that defense, I'm a quarterback sneak guy. Don't take any steps back. Uh, I'm the same way. Less than, a, less than a full yard, I'm going to sneak it. That's what I would do. Ryan Randall oh, rolling out. Throws and is dropped. Jesse Allen, the oh. fullback, couldn't haul it in. Junior Rosegreen out there with him. Auburn holds. I tell you, if you're known for being a running team and that's what you hang your hat on and you don't run it against Auburn with the length of the football, not only does it show the respect you have for Auburn, but I don't think you feel like you can win this ball game by being bigger and better at the running game. This was one. This is a touchdown, though. He's got to make that catch. Jesse Allen has one receiving touchdown this year. That ball was right there between the three and the seven. Well, the reason he dropped is because they're used to running the ball on those downs. They're not used to having to make those behind-the-back turnaround catches uh, for Virginia Tech. 99 yards of field against a good defense. What will Auburn do on first down? Campbell adjusts the play. Just sneaking for space to get out to the two. Guys, let me ask you, in a tight Told you they game, run a quarterback sneak out here. <laughs> in a tight game like this, why not just take the points if you think it might settle into a defensive game? Well, I think, Mike, at that situation, you're down inside the one. This was unlike Auburn. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was even closer. The nose of the ball was almost on the goal line. You've got to believe that you can get that just with the, the snap and the first step. Yeah, and I think Auburn is an undersized defense. They're not a defense that goes down there and gets in a gap eight and gets penetration. They sprint to the ball, and I think the big offensive line could have mashed right. them off the ball. Absolutely. The other advantage of going is if your defense can stop them, you leave them down here. Right, well, that's right. 
And he in good field position. Second and eight, a play action pass for the senior Campbell. Looking to stretch it out. It's caught by Courtney Taylor, who has the big catch of the year against LSU. Again, they were in a zone. That was the two-deep zone, and again, Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, likes the perimeter matchups, but that was just a beautifully thrown ball to, to uh, the wide receiver for Florida State. Beautifully thrown foam ball against the secondary. I mean, come on. That, he throws it right in front of Eric Green, threw it over the linebacker. Courtney Taylor's their go-to guy on third down. He's the guy they want to go to. What Foster's upset. Well, you got to be disappointed because there's the field position that you had a chance to get. Down hand up. Cadillac is stopped. Williams can't get to the line of scrimmage. Carlton Powell comes up with the tackle. He's a redshirt freshman out of Chesapeake. We say so many towns in Virginia, and Timmy, you know, living down that way. There is great high school football played in Virginia. It's one of the reasons this program has built itself up. Everybody talks about Florida. Everybody talks about California. But I want to tell you something. That Tidewater area, especially Hampton, it's as good as anywhere in the country. Virginia and Virginia Tech both benefiting. Virginia's turned its program around. Tech has taken some of the best players out of the state in the last couple of years. Campbell's first option was covered. Comes back to Courtney Taylor. Dancing around but brought down. At about the 21, Aaron Rouse made that play. So a few second teamers in on Bud Foster's defense here, and they're doing quite a job. I think both teams now have really settled in defensively. They're running to the football. Both sides are getting good pressure. We expected this. Coach talked about Auburn being the number one scoring defense in the nation, Virginia Tech being the number three scoring defense in the country. I mean, there's no question. Both these defenses are solid, and they're now settling into their game plan. Yeah, Auburn's known to put in about four or five special trick plays first series. They had a 31 to 35 yard gain in that first series. Since then, nothing big. Third down, needing to get to the 29. Hands down! Campbell loads up and fires for the first down. The 36 for Anthony Mix, the junior out of Alabama, the third receiver who caught 17 balls for the undefeated Tigers this year. Again, they were in a zone, and for some reason, Vincent Fuller, the safety, thought somebody had gotten behind him, and he ran out of the coverage. Well, it's a great job, too, of Jason Campbell sitting in the pocket. He got no pressure. He looked at him, then he had to look somewhere else and came back to him. He's so comfortable back there. This Jason Campbell, his confidence this year, Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, has really given him confidence to believe in himself, to believe that he's going to make something happen, and that's what he's done for this offense. There is Al, the offensive coordinator, who came from Indiana the last two years. Campbell rolls the pocket, loads it up, deep downfield for Taylor. Nice adjustment to the ball in the air. Pickup of 37 yards. First down and a lot of woofing going on between Taylor and Virginia Tech's Jimmy Williams. Courtney Taylor's unbelievable. He's a clutch go-to guy. 30 of his 38 receivers coming into this year have been for first downs. Look at him. He drives him off, then just glides in. Now watch him sit down into the open area, wave his hand and let him know he's there, readjust his route to the pass, and the scrambling Campbell. I'll tell you, Jason Campbell made that play, though. He rolls out. They've got a short man covered. He can run the ball, but he pulls up just long enough without going over the line of scrimmage to find a Courtney Taylor who really wasn't the intended receiver. Jason Campbell is playing phenomenal. Taylor, four catches, 80 yards. Then Obamanu comes in the game now at receiver as Ronnie Brown runs it to the left and takes it to the 20-yard line. You guys talk about Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell's had a lot to deal with. He's had four different offensive coordinators in four years. Noel Mazzoni, then Bobby Petrino, Hugh Nall, who has stayed on this staff, and this year, Al Borges. Borges is just kind of give him a let it rip mentality. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. The surrounding cast has been better, and the marriage of Borges, who is not exactly the guy you find down south coaching football, and Jason Campbell, Plus, using Brown and Williams, the two running backs together, is why this Auburn offense has taken off in 2004. Campbell second down. Inside the 15. And he has a rushing first down to the 13-yard line. I'll tell you, the quarterback everybody was worried about was Brian Randall getting outside the pocket, scrambling and picking up big yards. 
But in this drive, it's been Jason Campbell. Even when he scrambled, he came up to the line of scrimmage and threw and hit Taylor. I mean, he made that play, as you said, Terry, by coming up to the line and scrambling. Here again, he picks up big yards. He's just used in such good judgment. Twice he scrambled, pulled up the line of scrimmage, thrown the pass. That time he knew what he needed for the first down. Red zone territory, get the first down. Virginia Tech says Auburn moved, and it looks like they did. Well, start. Number 66 on the offense, five yards, first and 15. Step back, big picture here, guys. Remember, Virginia Tech doesn't go for the field goal, tries to leave the ball down there. Tommy Tupperville's team takes it from the one. If they can take it 99 yards and score a touchdown, it'd be real devastating getting close to halftime. I agree. I agree. By Virginia Tech not scoring at the other end inside the one, and Auburn coming back to score, I think it is a major, major factor in this ball game and could determine the outcome. First and 15, Cadillac. Williams uses the speed, but cannot get to the outside. We talk about Auburn's defensive speed. There's some in the maroon and the white here for Virginia Tech today as well. That was Vince Hall, a freshman, chasing him down, along with Vincent Fuller. You're exactly right. This defense for Virginia Tech, they used to be an eight-man front. Because of their skill people, they've gone to a seven-man front with more linebackers and safeties because they have more speed. Cadillac Williams bounces to the outside. Cadillac breaks the first tackle, but you're seeing this, this seven-man front. These linebackers and secondary people are so fast, they get to the ball very much like Auburn does. You can get a first down at the three. Check to a Williams run to the right. Shy of the first down, we'll have third and about four coming up as we move to two and a half before halftime. Big offensive line averages 6'5", 295 yards. Take a look at the Jeep rushing playbook and you see that they get these big offensive line out in front of them. They zone block, they also pull, they get the guards out in front, they'll come out like this and they get in front of them. And they give them lots and lots of practice and lots and lots of big guys in front of them. See, they pull the guard, get him out in front. That's big old Lindsey and Reddick. And then you turn Williams loose. He's 5'11", 210. That big offensive line, the cheap rushing playbook, he'll get behind it and he'll get you some yards. Four for a first down, seven for a touchdown. Campbell waits for somebody to come open, threw it over Cadillac's head and away. So again, Auburn a snap inside the 10 cannot get a touchdown and they'll look for a third field goal here it's the second of situation where the defense for Virginia Tech has given up a chunk of yardage the very first series they let them go down to the red zone down to the six force a field goal they come off the one yard line here and go all the way down now they hold them to a field goal Virginia Tech's doing an incredible job of bowling up in the in the in the red zone but this is a great, great series for Auburn to come off their one if they can end up with three points right here. Long, good from 23 and 19. Now from 24. Last pick from the left hash. This one from the right. And no problems for the sophomore from Tennessee. Three Auburn field goals. All the Tigers have to show for control of the line of scrimmage most of this game. Nine nothing for the undefeated Tigers. First time Auburn's played in the bowl championship series game. Jason Campbell has started four consecutive bowl games, only the 15th quarterback to do that. It's a little easier to do now with the proliferation of bowl games. Only three had done it before 1981, but it's still a good accomplishment. Campbell, Kyle Orton from Purdue, and David Green from Georgia doing it this year. Nine nothing as Philip Yost kicks it off. Nice and deep and nowhere to go for Mike Emo. And Virginia Tech will start at its own 20. First down, Randall throws it to the first row. Has nobody open and got rid of it. Quite a trip for those guys out at the Rose Bowl presented by City for that terrific Michigan-Texas game here tonight. And then they head off tomorrow to the FedEx Orange Bowl to join 
Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan. Good to see they finally got out of the studio, and one day maybe they'll make the traveling <laughs> squad like Terry. But, but, but as you heard, Charles Barkley kept it out late last night. So I do. I, I heard. <laughs> they can do that sometimes. I think Aaron Taylor may be able to handle Charles yeah. Barkley, though. I'm going to say this. Second and ten here for the Hokies. Quick start off the corner is an offside flag on Quinton Grove. So a free play for Randall, who hits Eddie Royal on the run. Royal has room to run. Trying to pick up his blockers. Eddie Royal kept a good play alive to take it out to the 43. So they'll decline the offside and take the gain of 23. You talk about Eddie Royal, my Off goodness. Sides, on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Well, first of all, there should have been a sack, and then there should have been an interception. But the guy that was the most exciting was wide receiver Eddie Royal. This guy, you see him at the top of the screen right now, working to the inside. Now, this was a just poor, poor throw because this ball should have been just intercepted. Eddie, Eddie stays with the ball. Now he starts doing his thing. Won a state championship last year in high school with his great skill. Now you see the speed going back and forth across the field. A great athlete, Eddie Royal. Cedric Humes, the back first down throw over the middle is incomplete. Trying to get it to Josh Morgan. Brian Randall looks like he's trying to guide it a little bit. Just doesn't look like he's found that comfort zone yet. He's a little bit upset with himself. I think he might be a little frustrated. And he knows, like Coach knows, that Rose Green thought he had that last pass picked. Yeah, Rose Green set him up very well, and uh, he rushed that one right there. See the numbers thus far for Randall and this passing offense. He's earned his sociology degree in three years. One of 15 college football players in all four divisions honored with the College Football Hall of Fame postgraduate scholarship. He's off to the races here and across midfield has a first down to the 35 yard line. There's a big 22 yard gain. Junior Rose Green made the tackle in the secondary. Looked like another Virginia Tech quarterback by the name of Michael Vick. I tell you, he runs like a running back. That is the difference between him and Jason Gamble. Jason's 4 or 5, but sets in the pocket like the quarterback. He runs like a running back, like a tailback. Down for Randall. This has been an effective throw. Roll the pocket that way, but it is dropped. And incomplete. Justin Harper dropped it. Guys, time for the Aflac trivia question here on this Monday night. If Auburn wins, we're going to have two undefeated teams. Auburn and Utah likely not winning the national championship. When's the last time we had two teams undefeated and neither won the national title? You mean in the same season? Our Good Aflac question. trivia question. Good question. Who came up with it? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, you, Tim? I thought we were sitting around last night. I thought the other one made it. I want to know why. No, no, no. I've got another tester oh, for no, you no, guys coming schools, up later. The four schools that are named after a color. I got that one down perfect. Brown, from, Auburn, Navy, and Siena. I know that one. <laughs> from the 36, this is second and 10, and the penalty marker will slow it down here and take the Hokies back five. Bold start, number 52 on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Jimmy Martin, the left tackle, starting his 33rd Virginia Tech game. He's a junior. He'll be back next year. Just a lack of, see the tackle right there, just a lack of poise by a veteran offensive lineman setting back too soon. Saw a lot of movement on defense, and he let that make him anticipate the snap. Being a veteran, you can't have that happen. All right, so the Hokies take a timeout. They have two left. Second and 15 when we come back. 9 nothing. Auburn on top. <laughs> Auburn dominated the first quarter. Two field goals. Virginia Tech left it down at the one. But Auburn responded with a long drive for a field goal. Much better offense from Tech here in the second frame. Need to get some points before the break. Second and 15. Randall throws incomplete. A good pass rush by Brett Edens off the edge. Forced that throw a little bit earlier than Randall hoped. See those second quarter numbers by Virginia Tech offensively starting to get some yards, but they've got to be a little bit disappointed. Five possessions in Auburn territory, four times deep, but so far, no points. And again, this is 
the toughest defense to score on in the country this year. 11 points per game. Confusion between Josh Hyman, the receiver, David Clowney comes over and gets him over to the proper spot. Still have seven on the shot clock. Play clock. And now, and now they have to take a timeout because it goes down too far. Well, with 41 seconds left, you need something good to happen here. Uh, very difficult situation. I said early, on third and plus 10, 11 or more, Auburn has only had three people make successful completions the entire season. Against this team, with the, fa the way they pass rush, they lead the SEC in sacks. Great coverage, a couple of great corner, co corner coverage, especially uh, their corner coverage, Carlos Rogers. This is a very difficult situation, but you got to take a chance to intercept here. 41 seconds left, maybe get some points. All right, earlier, guys, we asked the AFLAC trivia question because yes. we could have two teams, Utah, we saw in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and Auburn if they win here tonight. Last time we had two teams undefeated, and neither won the national championship. The year? 1975, Arizona State went 12 0, and Arkansas State went 11 0. All right, fellas. Only one time as an unbeaten team come into the Sugar Bowl and won it and did not finish number one. Do you know that school? University of Maryland beat Tennessee 28 to 13. They ended up number three in the polls because the polls were final before the bowl games. Hmm. Undefeated Maryland, the only team to I, play I, and win here undefeated no and not win the national championship. I had championship. no idea, but I could have said Maryland to any question you asked, <laughs> and I had a good chance of being right. For those wondering, Oklahoma 1975 national champion. Their second in a row in one of the two polls. This is third and 15. Good pocket and time for Randall. Throws the out and it is out of bounds. Incomplete. They had the tie, but it was too high for Eddie Royal with 35 seconds to go. If I'm on defense, I'm Auburn. I'm now thinking Frank Beamer's a special team genius. He's got great field position, 35 seconds left. I mean, I'd be very leery here. I'd watch out. You're in the area for a fake, but with 35 seconds left, not sure he'll do it, but defensively, you got to be thinking that way. Well, I think I think any time the ball's on the plus 40 and you're punting, something could happen here. But if you don't make it, you've given them enough time to kick a field goal. And I hate to say it, with the number one scoring defense in the nation, 12 points would, would be enough for Auburn to almost ice any team. Vinnie Burns to kick it away. No punt rush because they were doing punt safe. Kept the defensive people out. Protect against the fake. And the New Orleans native did not get a friendly home bounce. Down to the 18. Just to kick a 23 yards. The guy who's known some playoff success over the years, oh, Bruce Smith. He really has. All time leading sack man in the NFL. 19 years, 200 sacks. He's a Virginia Tech alum. Here to watch his alma mater give up three field goals. That's it. Nine points. But the Auburn Tigers are 30 minutes away from a perfect season. 9 nothing in the break of there. Susie Schuster with Tommy Tuberville. All right, Mike, thanks. You know, it's not the open field that's a problem. It's the prize fight in the red zone. Why is that? Oh, well, they got a good defense. They got a lot of speed, and they're doing a lot of moving right before we snap the ball, what we call stemming, giving us their offensive line a little bit of a problem, especially in the red zone. We just got to execute. What's the one thing you want to change, though, besides execution? Well, you know, we looked a little tired on defense there going at the end of the first half. You know, the main thing is we've got to control number three. Number three is the guy that we can control him, we can win the game. But if we don't, it's going to be a long game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mike? Ryan Randall's at number three. He's 10 of 21, Susie, for 106 yards. Well, will it be a uh, heartbreaking night for Auburn in the second half as the Tigers try to walk away with an undefeated season? They lead Virginia Tech 9-0 at the half. Mike Tirico, Terry Bowden. Tim Brandt back up here in the booth of the Superdome. Virginia Tech was shut out once this year. They came back to beat Virginia in that game. Tim, guys have gotten close to scoring, but nobody's been able to pop it in tonight. No question. Both teams have been ineffective inside the 10. Auburn's had seven snaps inside the 10. They got a net six yards, no touchdowns. Virginia Tech's had it three times inside the 10. They've had one net yard, no points. So I think both coaches addressed this at halftime. Plus, Auburn gets the opening kickoff here to start the second half. Mm -hmm. If they can take that down and score, Virginia Tech's in some trouble. Terry, how about what the coaches need to do in the second half? Let's take a look at your Home Depot coaching adjustments for the second half. Well, Timmy read it right on the head. Auburn's got to do a better job in the red zone. What they've got to do is handle the movement up front by the defense. It disrupts the running blocking. They've got to throw the ball play action on first or second down. For Virginia Tech, they got to tighten up between the 20s. 
two of the long drives, 68 yards and 99 yards, have ended up in field goals. They've got to tighten up, play old Virginia Tech defense, load the box, pressure defense. They're doing good against the run, but they got to make plays and keep Auburn from controlling the clock. Virginia Tech's defense has played well. One of the key players, their best guy up front is Darryl Tapp. For more on Darryl and his great family story, let's go down to Susie Schuster. Well, Mike, Darryl Tapp's a guy with a lot on his mind. Just after the Western Michigan game on 9-11, he found out his 30-year-old older brother, Charles, a captain in the U.S. Air Force, was being deployed to Iraq. His unit in charge of providing military oversight for the international zone, also known as the green zone. But he has watched every single one of Darryl's games there on eight-hour delay with a hokey, hokey marching band, as he likes to call it, from Iraq. And he's watched all those on the Armed Force Network. The two guys talk to each other via email two to three times a week, Mike. And Susie Charles Tapp was holding the flag there on the left side of the screen, and there is his brother Darrell, a junior who was first team all ACC this year. And Charles Tapp is sitting there with that same Virginia Tech flag as you look live in Baghdad. And Charles has been listening and watching the first half. I know with a lot of pride there, Charles, and you have other Hokie fans there. Uh, your brother and the guys have been doing a good job keeping the defense in it so far. What do you think about the second half? I think they just need to continue to clamp down on defense and uh, hopefully get some drives going and sustain a little bit of offense uh, so they can get some points on the board. Charles, it is late over there. What, what time is it? Uh, right now it's just a little after 6 in the morning. Okay. It's, it's been a long night, but it's been definitely worth it <laughs> to get up and watch there on the Hopies. And you're surrounded by some Virginia Tech fans there as well, correct? Absolutely. We definitely have our, our brood of uh, Virginia Tech fans here. Uh, we make up our Baghdad fan club. <laughs> well, please let everyone, since uh, their loved ones haven't had a chance to see them as well, give a wave and say hello to everyone back home. Oh, they said give a wave to your loved ones at home. Said, How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, look forward to have uh, an eye on you guys as you watch the second half. Here tonight and uh, all of our thoughts and prayers are with you and the rest of our women and men overseas as well Charles. Uh, thank you so much. Daryl Tapp's brother Charles over there live in the green zone in Baghdad watching at 610 on a Tuesday morning. Here is what Daryl Tapp thinks about his brother Charles who's over there serving our country while he's here trying to win this game for Virginia Tech tonight. We have a tight bond. He's always on my case about football, more so schoolwork, because that's where our major thing is in our family. So he's, he's always there for me, even though he's overseas, and I still love him to death, and I'm glad they'll do it for him. Darryl Tapp is the hardest worker on the Virginia Tech defense. If you've watched the Hokies play, you've heard the story of the lunch pail. It's been around for almost 15 years now. The lunch pail goes to the hardest working guy on the team, and he gets to keep it week in, week out if he's the most productive. Darryl Tapp took ownership of the lunch pail this week, this year, he hasn't given it up since summer because he says nobody's going to outwork me. Darrell and Charles Tapp, a special story. Jared Develli's kickoff starts the third quarter. Cadillac Williams taking it out. Some confusion and some trickery there. Who comes out of it with the pile? Whoa. Over across the 20 into the 23 yard line. A little riverboat gambler that Tommy uh, that Tommy Tupperville is coming out on that play there. Looked like 1942. Absolutely. Where's Waldo? The old scatter play, you don't know who's going to come out with the ball. Oh. On the one yard line, it kind of makes you a little nervous. <laughs> it's in the hands of Carlos Rogers. How about that? <laughs> That's fun. And it tells you how well coached Virginia Tech is. That's exactly right. It's just the ball's on the 21 yard line after that trickery. All right, so Charles Tapp watching in Baghdad, his brother Darrell in the Hokie defense. Stiff it inside the 20. Can they keep Auburn from a long opening drive? And Timmy said it. This could be a big drive in the game. Carnell Williams stopped in the first half. Gets it out to the 29 to start quarter number three. Carnell Williams only had seven carries, 15 yards in that first half. Well, if you take a look at the first half statistics, Mike, and it'll tell you just that. As a matter of fact, if you look at rushing yards, 53 for Virginia Tech. 52 for Auburn and that's key because the bonnet Auburn running attack other than Brown's 31 yard run on that second play from scrimmage 16 attempts 21 yards that's it and that's been big I think if anybody surprised us tonight it's how quick the Virginia Tech defenses look they've made Williams look like an average tailback and he hasn't looked like that all year 
Here's Ronnie Brown. First down and more. Stoned at the 40 by Eric Green. But two good rushing games there. 11 yards after the initial pickup. I don't know what it is, Coach, but Auburn right out of the locker room is so strong offensively. First half and second half. They pull, they get a block, they kick out, they make the seam, and he just runs right up in there. But the same kind of success they started with with the first drive in the first half. Again, what Al Board just their offensive quarter likes to do is show three or four plays that the defense hasn't seen. The first series coming out of the game, the first series coming out of the halftime, and hope to get some momentum, get field position change, or get some quick score. Williams picked up the block from Lindsay, but didn't go any farther. James Anderson and McCall McKee meet at the running back. As long as Auburn has the ball, why don't we take a timeout here and look at the Tostitos player comparison. Obviously, they've got the two great running backs, Cadillac Williams and, of course, Ronnie Brown. You see nine for Cadillac, six for Ronnie, so it's been fairly equal, and it's been 53 yards for Brown, 8.8 .8 average. So Ronnie Brown's getting a little bit better than Cadillac right now, and it's Brown's versatility, I think, that makes it more difficult to defend because they play him in so many different areas. And there he's in the slot, and Williams is the back. Second and 11. Campbell swings it out to Williams. There's that Virginia Tech defensive speed. Jimmy Williams, semi-finalist for the Thorpe Award that goes to the best defensive back in the nation. Makes it third and long. And you got to give credit to the defense a little bit, too, now. He had no chance. Watch Jimmy Williams. He'll beat the defensive back. He'll beat the block by the lineman. Come up there in Cadillac Williams. Doesn't really have a chance to use any of his talent. As he comes down with the ball, he's immediately wrapped up and tackled. I think Jimmy Williams moved from free safety to, to corner when D'Angelo Hall left in the first round to play for the Atlanta Falcons. And he's with that size, he's increased his value. That's to the exactly. NFL future. Find a big corner like that. D'Angelo had a touchdown yesterday for the Falcons. Third and 16. Campbell pressure and trouble. Throws on the run. Wide open Anthony Dix. Inside the 20. What a huge play to the 13. 53 yards. And there should have been a flag at the end of it for unnecessary roughness out of bounds. But again, Campbell with a scrambling ability and his height being able to see over the lineman just threw a strike to mix. As you see here, it's all Jason Campbell. He is so intelligent. He's 4'5". He's got great speed. He doesn't want to run out of the pocket and down the field. He wants to sit and find his open man. Anthony Mix is their slot receiver on the wide side of the field, 241 pounds, but he gets open because of Jason Campbell's ability to use his speed and still see the field. That should have been a penalty. They got a break there. You were right, Tim. Carnell Williams is the receiver closest to you. Ronnie Brown comes up to see what Jason Campbell's adjusting to. Deafening in here. Brown tries to bounce it, gets three to the 10-yard line. And Rochette, very good in the first half, made the play for Virginia Tech. Take a look at this. Now, right here, they're out of bounds. Right here, he throws him down. You can't do that. That's just discipline. And I'm sure the coaches for Virginia Tech will talk to him about that when Green gets to the sideline. But right now, they've got bigger, bigger fish to fry. They're up against it here with their backs against the wall. But Foster knows it, doesn't want to take his mind out of this right now. They've stopped him three times in the red zone from scoring a touchdown. One here would be very difficult. Campbell snaps up on the run. Jason Campbell to the five. We'll have third and two coming up. So, guys, here we go again. This will be the eighth snap inside the ten tonight for Auburn. In their first seven, they haven't scored a touchdown. Here's Susie Schuster. Guys, we're looking at a rebound here from Auburn. Well, that's because his offense calls him Mini Chow. You don't have to wait till tomorrow night to see Norm Chow in action. They say he makes the best second half adjustments in college football. Tommy Tuberville and his offensive coordinator, Al Porges. Third and two for the first down, five for the touchdown. To Devin Arubashadu! Touchdown, Tiger!
Jr. from Miami, Florida, fourth touchdown of the year. John Vaughn on for the extra point. Now, Tim, you were right. Huge opening drive, third and long. Campbell makes a play, keeps one alive. A penalty flag on Virginia Tech as they rough the kicker. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. Another mental error. Virginia Tech getting frustrated now. I don't care how good you are defensively. You cannot let this Auburn team have that many opportunities inside the red zone and get away with it. Kicker on the defense. 15 yards on the kickoff. Make no doubt about it, though, the difference in this game, Jason Campbell. They've stopped the Auburn running backs. Jason Campbell has been nearly perfect. Devin Aroma should do. Fourth touchdown of the year. Tigers plus 16. Campbell to Aroma should do. Makes it 16 nothing for the SEC champions and the 15 yard flag for roughing the kicker means the kickoff will come from midfield for Philip Yost. Mike Emo, one of the deep men back. And he'll watch Yost bang it right through the uprights. Well, two big, big plays on third down. Go back to the middle of that drive. Virginia Tech had them in check. We had third and 16. And the Campbell scrambling ability that coach talked about leads to the 53 yard pass to the junior Anthony Mix. And Tim, the ability of Campbell to scramble put him in position to score. Well, he had 101 coverage up here. They had a run look here, which froze these guys and kept them in tight. Then he just ran right in here between the two players and they hit the strike. It's well executed, designed play, made it look like a run through the strike over the middle. And bingo, the first touchdown of the game. Those two plays show you why Jason Campbell is being talked about as an NFL quarterback. He's got everything, folks. Tech has to find something offensively. Not there. Mike Emo, gain of one. Jason Campbell, 10 of 13, 182 yards and a touchdown. No interceptions. A perfect game. And, and like I said before, Tech has done a great job of neutralizing the running backs for Auburn. They've shut them down. These are great running backs. Jason Campbell, just like he get against Tennessee, just like he get against Alabama, and LSU, he came and made big plays, and it's been the difference of this game. Meantime, Brian Randall is opposite number, yet to get a smooth, long drive going. They had one, got it down to the one, chose not to kick the field goal, went for the touchdown, turned it over on downs. Here's a nice throw to Eddie Royal, speed on the edge. Across the 30, a first down. They continue to throw it at Montavis Pitts. A gain of 10. I want to go back to Campbell for a second. You, everybody's talking yeah. about what a great game he's having, and you're right. They talk about Cadillac Williams. They talk about Ronnie Brown being first-round draft picks. I'm telling you something. Jason Campbell is getting the attention of every scout in America, and his stock is rising probably more rapidly than anybody in this dome tonight. Yeah, we, we've got him in the first day. I'm just wondering how far up that first day we're going to go when we see him play like this. I mean, his great arm and the way he scambles, and I think his understanding of the game of football is being shown tonight. When you say first day, it's the first day of the draft. Right. The first three rounds of the NFL draft come on day one. Josh Hyman tackled to the open field by a guy who will be taken in round one of the draft. Carlos Rogers. What makes a Thorpe Award winner the best cornerback, defensive back in the country? Well, it's hard to see it from his stats. Because, Tim, they just didn't throw at Carlos Rogers here in 2004. No, that's exactly right. And everybody talks about the fact that Carlos Rogers is one of those untouchable guys. And essentially, he is. I mean, the all-everything quarterback, they look his way. They won't go there. I mean, it, it's just been unbelievable how he shut them down this year. When they do go in that, way, that direction, they only complete 28% of their passes. They only completed 18 of them <laughs> all year. Virginia Tech gains seven and goes backwards by five. A little poise being lost here by Virginia Tech. They're, they're sensing they're losing their grasp Brandon on the game. Full 16 start, to nothing. 79 in, 52 on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. Call from Dick Honig. Should mention the rest of the officials working the game tonight. Jim Krogstad, Brett Durbin, Dana McKenzie, Michael Cannon, Darrell Leftwich, and Dino Paganelli, the Big Ten crew. And as mentioned, Dick Honig, the referee, working his final game here tonight. Auburn's done such a great job against the run. If Randall doesn't start hitting passes, and I mean some deeper passes, not only the intermediate routes, 
they're, they're in trouble. Second and eight. Look for the tight end, King. He's open, but Pitts does a nice job of tackling him out at the 35. Third and about five coming up. That's not going to help him right now, Mike. They've got to go beyond that. They've got to loosen up this Tiger defense. You know, you really did call it right before the game. They've worked these tight ends as much as they can, but they want to get that deeper flag route, and Auburn's making them take the flat route for three or four yards, and they'll play that game all night. Third and five passing situation. 75 is going to be lined up on the defensive end in blue. Loves to get off the ball. Stanley McClover. Up top is Royal, and he's up against Rodgers. Force Randall into a sack. But Clover slid inside along with T.J. Jackson, and together those two got to the quarterback. And give that sack to the All-American Carlos Rogers because he had Royal completely covered. That's where he wanted to go with the ball, and he couldn't get there. Watch his head. He looks right, goes through progression. Now he's looking left over at Royal, but he's covered by Carlos Rogers. That is a coverage sack. That defensive front did a great job also. T.J. Jackson got great push. And then Stanley McGlover, this guy's so reckless. He's the fastest defensive lineman in the SEC. Only a fresh, and he represents the future of Auburn football and the talent they have. Vinnie Burns to kick it, kick it to Carnell Williams. In a way, it was not a good kick. And Auburn is fixing to blow this one out. The sack from Jackson. Auburn up 16 and in good field position. Campbell first down, looked long and is brought down. Virginia Tech with a first down stop. Jonathan Lewis, one of two brothers who play the defensive tackle spot, comes up with his fifth sack of the year. Well, what you just saw is very rare. Jason Campbell being sacked, especially tonight. Take a look at this, and we'll show you what he's done, especially on that last drive. Jason Campbell, who's 6'5", 223, finally scrambles, used that height to see mix. Then he scrambles, picks up some yardage, some key yardage on this drive, and then, of course, the touchdown to Aroma should do. So, I mean, that last drive was perfect. He's now 10 of 13. 182 yards and a touchdown. Boy, he hung in there well as Vince Hall was coming right in his mug to throw the touchdown. Carnell Williams chased down from behind. Gain of just a yard. That was Daryl Tapp in there on the play. Saw his brother Charles watching in Baghdad with the rest of the Hokie fans. Third down coming up. I can't emphasize how well this Virginia Tech defense is playing against Cadillac Williams and those guys. I saw him play as a junior. Unbelievable player. It's a defensive game, but I'll tell you, I'm looking at Charles and those guys over at Baghdad. Yeah. That's the defense I like. That's right. <laughs> They've done a great job against Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown. I'll say that. They need to get to the Virginia Tech 46. Campbell throws on the run again this time. He bounced it to a rubber shadu. And an important three and out for the Hokie defense. Virginia Tech has returned four interceptions for touchdowns this year, plus a fumble and a blocked field goal for scores. So they score in a lot of different ways. Auburn has turned it over 19 times this year, but not tonight. It might be this defense for Virginia Tech that's going to have to change the ball game for the Hokies. And Virginia Tech, over the years, has been the best kick-blocking team. Boy, could they use a big special teams play here. If, if they do, Auburn's never had a punt blocked or a kick blocked. Field goal block this year. Let's see what happens. I snap. Bliss gets rid of it as quick as possible. And it will be down at the 20 by Courtney Taylor. Line drive, 38-yard unreturned punt. So this Virginia Tech offense that put up points against Miami, put up points in the second half after being shut out by Virginia, Ryan Randall and company led the ACC in scoring this year. And they find some points on an important drive. The Hokies trying to get on the board. And they start with the ground game. Mike Emo, four yards, and Carlos Rogers 
had the uh, payoff hit after Wayne Dickens was holding the junior running back. Here's Susie Schuster. Well, you know, Carlos Rogers has found an unlikely new best friend in Michigan wide receiver Braylon Edwards. The Jim Thorpe Award winner, the Boletnikoff Award winner, they spoke last night and today. Braylon telling Carlos to make sure he had an incredible amount of fun in this bowl game. Of course, it's the last game of their college careers. These might be guys who are trying to eat each other up next year, Mike. Yeah, they'll uh, certainly be first-round draft picks. What a show Braylon and Steve Preston and Vince Young put on in that Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Jeff King, the tight end, a couple of yards shy of the first down. Junior Rose Green, also a first-team All-SEC player in that Auburn secondary. Like okay. I was just going to say they continue to go to the tight end, but eventually they are going to have to go deep. Well, they tried a lot of times against uh, Montavis Pitts. Yep. You see these numbers, guys? We talk about Boise State and Louisville, wide open offense, spread offense. Defense wins championships. Auburn, USC, Virginia Tech, Oklahoma. Four of the top five scoring defenses in the country. The last four teams playing here in 2004's college football season. And this Auburn defense, best of the bunch, hasn't given up one here tonight. Third down throw, Randall incomplete. Ian King. And it's a three and out for Virginia Tech again. Well, there's your tight end one more time. King now only three catches for 12 yards. That's it. Yeah, watch right here. He's working, he's working King. Jeff King comes up there. He works on the little sail route, the flag route, has to turn his back. It's a difficult catch for a tight end to make. Those guys aren't as fluid as the wide receiver. And he's keeping his eyes on those tight ends. That looked to be the game plan because Eddie Royal was open there as, as Jeff King worked behind him on the sail route, the flag route to the outside. Parnell Williams led the SEC in punt returns, 11 and a half per. Vinny Burns gets good hang time on this one. And 23 Williams. Dancing, uh -oh. making people miss. And he takes it down to the 35-yard line, but the penalty marker comes down. Could erase a 12-yard return after the 49-yard kick from the New Orleans native Burns. Vinny's dad, a member of the Sugar Bowl committee for two decades, it was his pleasure to have his son's team in this game. And Vinny's dad extended the bid after Virginia Tech won the ACC title in the Orange Bowl back on December 4th. Lock in the back, on the run back. It'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So we'll step out for a moment. Auburn 16, Virginia Tech nothing. Three and a half left, third quarter. As the Tigers try to complete the perfect season. Champion to the SEC, Auburn gets to come here to the Nokia Sugar Bowl last year, hosting the national championship game. LSU was victorious. ADT National Championship trophy given out tomorrow night. FedEx Orange Bowl here on ABC, 80 Spring 5 Pacific. Ronnie Brown, first down, lost a yard. Jimmy Williams made the tackle. Brown now with eight carries, 55 yards. He's averaging eight yards a carry. His first rush, of course, was for 31 yards. But what's interesting about this, Mike, that with that rotation, neither back has carried the ball more than 24 times in a game all year. But they have nine 100-yard games collectively. They work so well together and continue to move around. As a matter of fact, this time they've got Brown in the backfield, and they've got Williams spread out wide. So interchangeable, these two. Campbell rolls the other way and throws intercepted. intercepted. Mike, those are the turnovers we were talking about. This is the 20th turnover for Auburn this year. Virginia Tech forces them, and this can change a ball game. Jimmy Williams with the pick. Right here, you see Jimmy Williams. He's a veteran junior defensive back. Got great speed, move from safety to corner. He doesn't sit back, jumps up, reads the out, and jumps in for the interception. That's a great play. It's the first mistake. This Auburn team has played almost mistake-free ball. Again, there's Jimmy Williams, move from safety, two cornerback positions. Is a big back, but can also cover on the short plays. Tim told you earlier that Tidewater area, so many great oh. athletes. Allen Iverson, Williams, that area, same high school. Huge. 
huge opportunity. Bruce Smith as well. That's right. On the run, they get it in the hands of Josh Hyman. First down. As he's taken out of bounds at the 20-yard line, a pickup of a dozen. Eddie Royal threw a nice block downfield. Well, this is a big break for Virginia Tech because Auburn had play almost mistake-free ball going into that interception. They had no turnovers, only two real minor penalties before that uh, punt return kickoff. They've only given up two sacks, and they've held the Hokies two of eight on third downs. They've played almost mistake-free until that interception. Well, we said earlier the Virginia Tech defense had to change this ball game. They've given the offense the opportunity. Now can the offense capitalize? One back, it's Hughes. Randall sees the defense and adjusts the play. Gives it to Hughes. You cannot have those slow developing runs with the cutbacks against Auburn. They're coming so fast into those gaps. And the first down is the most important down in football. And you have to pick up yardage so you can open your playbook from second down and short or medium yardage. And all night long, Virginia Tech has been unable. Here they've got zone blocking, trying to take advantage of their size and they just can't get there because of the speed of the Auburn defense. If you're going to run a zone, run the inside zone that cuts back. The outside zone is too slow developing. Shotgun, four receivers, one back. Well, it's all right. You can say hi. You say nothing. All four receivers, freshmen. And they make a play down here. They'll be blocking for Hughes. Nice run by Cedric out too. 13 yard line. So much has changed in football, and one of the things is the ability to run out of these four wide shotgun formations. And by spreading that field and going sideline to sideline with your offensive formation, what they're trying to do is take that speed of that defense, thin them out, and create space for your running back, which they did right here for Cedric Hume. Not one of the great form tackles in the history of football by <laughs> Junior Rosegreen, but he got him on the ground. Big play here now. Third and two. Yeah, I think this is two down territory here. You're not going to have many opportunities against Auburn. You've got to get this thing in two downs. Two Humes eludes Rose Green, pounds forward. He's going to be very close. Looks like it's just shy of the yellow line, and we could have a fourth down coming up. Brett Eden's made the tackle, but did you see Rose Green, the safety, timing the snap? I tell you, he's so he's their hardest worker on defense. You know, this guy's kind of kind of the mouth from the south. He's been talking ever since he came up in Fort Lauderdale, but he backs us up with his work ethic and his toughness. And those kids listen to him. Not only can he, can he intercept balls, but he'll come up and make tackles. As for a measurement, to be about a foot short of the first down. Fourth down coming up. Fourth and. Wow. A couple of feet. That's almost a yard. That is a yard. Yeah. I think this is too long for the quarterback sneak. I think they've got to hand it off against this great defense and hand it off to the tailback. Fourth and one. It is Humes. Leans forward to the 10 yard line and he has the first down. Nice job by Humes with no lead back, able to get enough to keep the drive alive. And remember when the ball was on the goal line, it was about one football link from the goal line. That's about where I wouldn't mind quarterback sneaking. That ball was at least two football links. You've got to now have a running play to go off tackle. Great call by the offense. We're going to let the clock run down here and get us to the end of the third. And a must-score situation, probably in a position where you have to think about going for two if you're Virginia Tech, because you won't have many more chances against Auburn. They may just be thinking about Georgia Tech, 25 points in the second half. The Tigers, 16-0. Watching the Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports. Off we go to the fourth quarter with Tim Brandt, Terry Bowden, Susie Schuster, Mike Tirico, Auburn. Three first half field goals. The game's only touchdown. A pass to Devin Aroma should do on the opening drive of this half. 
Virginia Tech after an interception has it first and goal from the 10. Spread the defense again with formation. And Brian Randall in trouble uses his escapability and throws it away. Randall took a shot. It was Stanley McClover again, that freshman out of South Florida in Fort Lauderdale. McClover, the leading pass rusher, helps him up and says, come on, let's do this again. I like it. I thought he was sacked right here, but there's the escapability we talk about. Now he's looking, can't find anybody, but knows he's going to take a big pounding. That is picture perfect. Just tuck your tail, sky your eyes, put your hat under his chin, and pancaking. McClover's the real deal. He's uh, that Miami attitude. Look at that. a smile on his face. Come on, bring it again, he says. The hardest 10 yards in football is first and goal from the 10-yard line against the number one scoring defense of the nation. Quarterback draw, Randall to the five. What a hit! Upended by Carlos Rogers. Wow. He looked for a second like he was going to get into the end zone, and Rodgers came out of there like a bullet. This is a design play. Quarterback draw, spread the field. Now watch like a bullet coming right out of there. 14, Carlos Rodgers, the All-American. Oh, what a tackle. 6'1", 200 pounds. He's not a little corner either. That makes him so attractive in the NFL when you've got that kind of side. And this guy never comes off the field. He can run all day. He can play all day. Never comes off the field. Special teams, defense. Incredible athlete. Four down territory. Randall, second option, threw it too high. Justin Harper broke free for a second. So did Josh Morgan. Will they think about going for the field? Oh, they will go for the field goal to get on the board here. But not four down territory. No, and again, I'm not so sure it was four down territory there because of the fact they need to get five some yards. points. And it's five yards away. You know, he's open, and he's just, he misthrows it. Looks like the ball slipped right out of his hand. But, I mean, he was open. Justin Harper had nobody around him. First field goal attempt of the night for Brandon Pace, a 23-yarder. First team all ACC kicker. Missed it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Four shots inside the 10. They come up empty again. Seven snaps inside the Auburn 10. Five yards, no points. Tiger defense, toughest to score on in the country. Hasn't given up a thing tonight. Virginia Tech remains scoreless. Great opportunity to add with a field goal there. Well, the Auburn defense turns them away again. And now the offense can try to eat some time off this clock. Arnell Williams has not gotten going tonight. Just 11 carries for 26 yards. Go back to that missed field goal from Brandon Pace. So good this year. A semifinalist for the Groza Award that goes to the best kicker of the nation. Great rush from the right. I, I don't think he would have. I think it had been blocked if he had not made it. He was a blocker up the middle. And the reaction here was disappointment. And in Baghdad. What was that? With Charles Tapp. The brother of Daryl Tapp, the Virginia Tech defensive lineman, and the other Virginia Tech fans gathered in the early Tuesday morning hours in Baghdad. Disappointed as well. Williams. To the 28. But rather, Ronnie Brown, I beg your pardon, will have 32 coming up. Vince Fuller made that play the free safety. Easy mistake to make. Williams, Brown, alternate, Thanks. move around, <laughs> wide, behind the tailback, playing fullback. They're everywhere. I figure if they say that they're unselfish, I can be unselfish and give one of them the other guy's name. Well, they, they, in the one back set, they sub each other. They don't even have a coach telling when to go in. They look at each other and they unselfishly take each other in and out of the game. It is Brown with uh, Jake Slaughter, the fullback in front of him, carrying to the right side and across the line for a first down at the 31. From 
the 31. 12 minutes away from the perfect season. Mike, these guys are playing for a national championship in their minds. So with 12 minutes to play in this game, their game plan now is to shorten the game, melt the clock. That's three straight runs. They're just going to shorten this thing and make it impossible for Virginia Tech to come back. Uh, and, and your defense has played this so, so masterfully. I mean, they've not given up any points. No matter what happens, a turnover, whatever, the defense steps up and gives no points. So they really don't have to take any crazy chances here. Tommy Tuberville turned 50 during this season. Born in Arkansas. Tenth year as a head coach in the SEC. Sixth year here at Auburn. Williams carries for him out to the 34-yard line. Aaron Rouse has made back-to-back -back tackles. Just to remind everyone, the way the Bowl Championship Series works, it's a compilation of three elements. The media poll of the Associated Press, the coaches poll, and the computers. And USC and Oklahoma ahead of Auburn in all three. Now, a couple of points here. Auburn did receive some first-place votes in the writers and TV broadcasters poll and some first-place votes in the coaches poll. However, the coaches have signed away their right to vote for Auburn number one. The winner of the championship game in the FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night will win the BCS title, and the coaches will vote for that team number one. Even the nine coaches who voted Auburn number one coming into tonight. Mason Campbell throw to Courtney Taylor. That's complete. And a, right at the first down marker at the 41. The sticks are on the far side, so we'll check the spot. Mike, you've opened up Pandora's box now, and, and part <laughs> of the reason that Auburn is not playing in the Orange Bowl, well, number one, Bowling Green pulled out of their schedule, and the Citadel came in, and I can tell you that there has never been a team since the BCS started that has won the national championship, including last year's split, that had a Division I AA team on it, and it was Citadel that replaced Bowling Green on that schedule. Now let's explain that story. You see Oklahoma played Bowling Green. Bowling Green had a game set up against Auburn, and in 2003, they asked to switch it out so they could play Oklahoma. And Bowling Green finished 8-2. They beat Memphis in the GMAC Bowl, and they're in the top 25. They've offside with contact by Jim Davis, so that should stop the play and bring us a five-yard flat. So the, the BCS computers take that into effect and offside, negatively look at it. Offside, number 95 on the defense. First and five. We talked about the uh, BCS standings. Let's take a peek at the BCS standings brought to you by Allstate. At the start of the season, Auburn was fourth. Miami up there ahead of them. Canes lost a couple of games and dropped back. But you see USC and Oklahoma were near the top right from the start. And that is the complaint that Auburn fans have. USC and Oklahoma never dropped in the final polls. So they went wire to wire up at one and two in the voting polls. And the computers, Oklahoma was able to jump up. And Auburn never had a chance to get up to number two. Although for one week in the coaches poll, they tied Oklahoma in the two spot. This is first and five. And Williams now starting to get guys to turn down tackles. First down at the 48-yard line. Tommy Tuberville wanted to be in Miami for the FedEx Orange Bowl. And there is some disappointment that they are here and not there. It's hard to get to this point. And that's the reason you're so disappointed because you, know, you don't know how long it's going to be till you have a chance to get back to this point again. So we've got a good football team. We've played well all year long, been very consistent. Uh, every game that we've played, there's not been a game in doubt in the fourth quarter. And what else can you do? I understand the system. It, it's the only system we have. And I understand uh, somebody has to get left out. We're just disappointed with us. Two-yard game for Williams there. And Terry. How true is you cannot, you don't know how hard it is to go undefeated. And it may not happen again. For me, it happened when I was young, but we weren't eligible. My father, he was late 60s before he had his first undefeated season after the bowl games. It took him his entire career to get an undefeated season, and he's had one. And you never know it. That's how difficult this is and how disappointing it's got to be. Your 11 0 Auburn team in 93 was on probation from the prior administration when Pat Dye was the head coach. That's why you were ineligible to be in the bowls in the national championship. Well, you know, you're right about the early season rankings too but most importantly was the strength of schedule of the three top teams especially the two in tomorrow night's Orange Bowl there is no question that the worst schedule or the weakest schedule belonged to Auburn because they had the Citadel Louisiana Monroe and Louisiana Tech and those three teams were all lower than 88th in the Sagarin ratings you've got to believe that hurt them badly 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If they would have been ranked number five at the beginning of the season, it's debatable whether they would have changed anything, but I think would have been much closer. And just like uh, Frank Beamer had them number two, and at one point they were tied for number two, I think there's an argument if they had not been so far down or the poll started later, they're right in the thick of this thing, especially with a shutout going right now. This is third and one. To Cadillac, Williams lost the football. It's on the ground. But Paul McKee and Xavier Davey trying to get it for Virginia Tech. And the Hokies come up with the recovery. McKee, the senior, the top tackler on this team, able to get it as Williams was stretching for that extra half yard. Maybe one last hope for the Hokies. Eight and a half left to play. They've yet to score, but on back-to-back -back drives, the Tigers have given it up. A Campbell interception, now a Williams fumble, and the Hokies put it in the end zone. And many of the fans in the Superdome will be spilling on through the French Quarter on into Bourbon Street. The Auburn fans could be celebrating here in Roland Toomer's Quarter back on the Auburn campus if they can complete the best season in school history. Eight and a half minutes away. Tech with a last gasp. Randall first down throw complete. Josh Morgan at the 45. A 17 yard pickup. Junior Rose Green on the tackle. Virginia's been able to move the ball up and down the field. They certainly have opportunities. If you take a look at this, here comes Randall. Scrambles out, gets it down to the one foot line. How about this? This is a touchdown that is dropped. That could have been 16 to 7. Here's the field goal attempt. How close it is? 16 to 10. Instead, though, by missing those opportunities and the frustration that goes to Frank Beamer, they're down 16 to zip and running out of time with just 8.15 left. Justin Hamilton is coming as the running back here on this series. The third back who was a wide receiver in 2002. Better pass catcher out of the backfield. Here he is as a runner to gain about five first down yards. Dodge defensive playbook will show you the same type of story that we're trying to picture here. Here's inside the red zone. They're down on the 10. Here's your key guy right here. You know if you get him, wherever this ball goes, you can stop the play. Quarterback draw, watch Rodgers come in and upend him at the five when it looked like he had the outside and a touchdown this way. But instead, they don't get it. Rodgers makes the great play. That is your defensive play, I think, of the ball game. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Getting five, Hamilton the outlet, Sears in the open field, couldn't make the tackle. Submarines his body forward as Carlos Rogers came to get him again. One I'll, place where Rogers has improved his toughness, in addition to being a good cover guy, he's tough and lays a lick. Yeah, he's so physical. You know, that's what happens. You get you get called or ranked a, a, a cover corner, mm -hmm. and they assume you can't. You're Deion Sanders, you can't tackle. This guy can tackle, he's physical. Uh, everything an NFL would want in a cornerback, Carlos Rogers. I said, hey, Carlos, you've been walking up and down Bourbon Street. He goes, no, man, I'm trying to save my legs. I'm sitting in the casino. Yep. Everybody <laughs> talked about, like, Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown announcing they were going to stay for their fourth year. Carlos Rogers was in that press conference, too. They couldn't be better off either because of it. Randall, deep ball for Josh Hyman. Flag. Pass interference is 15 yards in college football. So from the 44, it'll take it down to the 29. Zach Gilbert, one of the backup corners with an extra DB, was on the field. Gives him a first down, though. We got to see if it's offensive or defensive, and it is against the defense because they are taught to fight with their arms as they run. As a matter of fact, we went over this That's with some of the DBs. On the now watch this. Here's the contact. Now watch their arms. See, now you think he's grabbing that jersey, but he's trying to hide that from the official, but that is the way they're taught. That is a great call. Dave Perry sitting back here, head of officials in the Big Ten. He's giving them a standing O. And that, but they're both pushing those hands on each other, though. I will say that. But you know what? This type of game, 60 to nothing, give up the 15, don't give up the ball down there. So uh, I'm good, not, I'm not surprised play. that he right, didn't, didn't make the play. That's good coaching there. Must score for the Hokies. Randall on the run. Royal couldn't haul it in. Incomplete. How many drop passes have we seen for the Hokies? You know, I want to say when you're a freshman, a young guy, you have skill, you can make plays, but the one thing you don't, you don't really have consistency. You'll miss one right here. Look at the top outside receiver. Eddie Royal, a true freshman, makes big plays, 
but there's one he's got to have. Just didn't look it in, tucked the ball away, dropped a needed reception here as time rolls down to 17. Well, that is a strike. How about this? In the uh, Frank Beamer era, 18 wonderful years in Blacksburg, largest fourth quarter comeback was 15 against George Welsh's Virginia team almost a decade ago. Hokies do not panic. The team won four games decided by a touchdown or less this year. Here is Randall stepping up down the middle. It's incomplete for Josh Morgan. Rogers step for step. I mean, you talk about a window to throw in. It was like no window there. <laughs> You know, one of the things I would do here if I was coaching, and of course, that's why I'm up here and not down there, but I would now try to change the pace of the ball game. I mean, time is running short. I'd have more of a sense of urgency with my guys. I'd get them in and out of the huddle. I'd just try to change the pace of the ball game and get my guys focused on urgency. This is the sixth time Virginia Tech has been in Auburn territory. They have not scored tonight. Pressure coming. They're all coming. Randall's complete to Josh Morgan on the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Hokies. And they will go for two. Second touchdown of the year for Morgan. Randall's telling the referee where he'd like the ball for the two-point play. Well, you see the safety. Will Herring coming right at the middle. They put him in man coverage. Now you got to make the tackle. Now they played off too loose. That was Carlos Rogers covering and missing the original tackle just a little bit too far away. Got to play him a little bit tighter. Good call, Coach. That was Gilbert, 38. He's a freshman, missed a freshman, cost him a touchdown. Two-point conversions on the year. Virginia Tech one for one. They passed for their one. College football division 1A 42% of the time teams convert to keep it a one possession game Randall's throw is scoop at the turf no signal yet no hit the ground oh and with the naked eye that looked like the right call Richard Johnson was the receiver and the call was that it hit the ground no two point conversion looked like the side judge was looking for help he got it that's good officiating this is a Big Ten crew in the regular season. This would have been replayed. The replay system worked wonderfully in the Big Ten. And you see there that it hit the ground. A correct call. Virginia Tech down 10. May look for an onside kick after this. That missed short field goal looming large now. Virginia Tech down 10. And here's Susie Schuster. Well, Mike, we've got a result for that best of the Bulls competition. You all texted B. You chose 2003 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Ohio State and Miami will each receive a check for $10,000 from Nokia. What a great game it was. The overtime classic out in the desert in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl as Ken Dorsey was pulled down in that final play. And Ohio State won its first national championship in over a quarter century. And that game had so many future NFL players already over 40 players from that game are in the National Football League. We've got some high level talent here tonight but the Nokia best of the Bulls winner was that 03 national title game. Coach talk about some strategies here too early for an onside. I'd kick it deep and try to hold them for a score to give yourself one more. We have a whistle and Auburn took a timeout after seeing what personnel was out there from Virginia Tech. That's interesting, huh? That's respect for what Frank Beamer does for his special teams. Well, you know, we talked about coming into this game that special teams were a push coming in, that both teams were so consistent, they focused so much on special teams that you couldn't give that body an edge. Tommy Tuberville took his staff to Virginia Tech five years ago to study special teams, and I guarantee that's the emphasis. They go out there and look at personnel, see the personnel that's on the field, call a timeout to make a decision. All right, we'll see what the decision is when you come back. Josh Morgan, who scored the touchdown, a little bit dejected for the moment, could be back on the field. Auburn did not have its hands team on the field for the first kickoff, called the timeout, now brings its hands team on the field. 
concern, maybe fatigue. I don't know about dejection, but Onside. definitely the onside kick. And wheeled in by Devin Aroma should do the wide receiver at the 45 yard line. So sweet hands there. Mm -hmm. Virginia Tech never got the bounce that they really no. wanted on that onside kick. Back to the last touchdown. As Morgan took it to the house. And the Hokie fans across the country, in the Dome, and in Baghdad. Watch it, baby! Watch it, baby! Touchdown! Yeah. Yes, that's what we needed, baby. That's what we needed. Made them think a little bit of the Georgia Tech game where, the where Virginia Tech where Virginia Tech came back and scored 22 points with four minutes and 55 seconds left. And with the flag there, Charles Tapp, the brother of defensive end Daryl Tapp, he and the D have to hold Auburn now. They stopped Williams for the loss of a yard. That is Daryl Tapp in there on the play. Virginia Tech with all three of its timeouts left now. Here's Tapp. Brother probably going crazy here because he split the double team, came and made the tackle. That's pretty sweet right there. Team all ACC this year. There you go. That's my brother making the play. <laughs> Second and ten, no gain. Plenty of time on the play clock. Nine seconds left. Cadillac. Williams has the edge this time across midfield and about a yard shy of the first down. Call the key making the tackle. Mike, I give that last big run to Campbell. Third in the yard, Williams this time is stopped very close to the line, but but key comes in, probably makes it fourth down. They're going to stop the clock Virginia here. Virginia Tech's got to take a timeout. I, let me go back. I want to say that big run was on Campbell because when he comes to the line of scrimmage, he reads the defense. First thing he does is read the defensive alignment of the lineman. Then he reads through that to the safety. That's why he was taking so long up here. Then he checks to right or left. This time, he didn't read it right and didn't check in. He checked into the, the power of the defense. But the last time on the big run that almost got the first, why he took so long is he checked from one side to the other and it worked. Eric Green lucky not to get a flag there. It's fourth down. Virginia Tech has taken timeout. We'll be right back in New Orleans. They came out measured during the timeout. A full yard short. Auburn will come out to punt the ball away. Virginia Tech will put 10 at the line and try to rush him. As Richard Johnson goes back deep for Cody Bliss's kick. It was a run that stopped the clock here at 5-11 after the timeout. Pressure on for Bliss. Oh. Beautiful kick. Turns it over. Bounces tantalizingly inside the three. And it's down at the two. Cody Bliss, who struggled in the SEC title game against Tennessee, had a 15-yarder and had one snap go through his hands. Tommy Tumberville got after him pretty well. But I'll tell you what, you cannot kick a ball or pooch a ball any better than he did right here. Like a 60-degree wedge, just had that thing bite and come backwards, suck up on you. And although he made some mistakes in the SEC, he's not had a punt block all year. He gets the ball off. I talked to Frank Beamer. He said the snaps are all good. The guy kicks him well. We'll have to have a blocking breakdown to get a block because they don't mess up their timing. Their kicker and their long snapper get it off on time. His deep snapper, Pete Compton, from the same high school, Brentwood, Tennessee, down there to stop. 97 yards to go. The Hokies need a big play. They start down the middle of the tight end. Off his pins is Mazetta, but... Jared hangs on after Junior Rose Green made the tackle at the 23. Four Got to get him up. Got to get him up. Get him going. No huddle. Just straight to the line. Go back to that onside kick. Now, if they had kicked the ball deep, held him inside the 20, and then punted the ball to the midfield, a play like that puts you on a plus 30. It's hindsight, but the question is, do you not kick the ball deep or do you kick the onside kick where the chances are pretty low that you're going to recover? From the 23, senior Brian Randall, his final game at Virginia Tech. Off to the races. 
very close to that first down line. The clock will stop as they check it. And as you know, college football first down stops the clock to reset the chain. And while they check it, Randall's got to get him up. He's calling the play right now. So when that clock starts to move again, he can jump right on it. In a situation here where if you uh, do score the touchdown, you go for the extra point, make it a three-point game, and take your chances with trying to tie it and send it to overtime. Virginia Tech trailed from the start. Randall's pass, Josh Hyman, is out to the 38-yard line, a pickup of five, so the clock will tumble inside four minutes before the next snap. Derek Graves made that tackle. Still have two timeouts, under four minutes they go. They've got to score twice. And, and I think about the uh, Capital One Bowl where, where LSU gave up the deep ball to Iowa. you got to play the umbrella. Your secondary deep, make them catch it underneath you in situations like this. Don't ever let a guy catch it deep going downfield. Randall held on to, escapes the one hand, now fires, and it's intercepted, deflected by Rose Green into the hands of Derek Graves. Oh, Mike, it was second down. He didn't have to force it. He was outside of the tackle box. He could have thrown it away to buy third down. That is a team play. It starts with the pass rush. Right here, it all starts with, you said, the great pass rush and the pressure that he got from Ray Ratcliffe right there. You see the rep, the excellent pass rush. Now he's scamming. This is where he should have thrown it out of bounds. You're outside the tackle box. You got Rose Green, Junior Rose Green's going to be right there to intercept the ball. Tips the ball up. Derek Graves gets the interception. But it all started with Jay Ratliff getting the great pressure. What a game for Graves. That interception to go with his six tackles. The whole defense was in on that one. Travis Williams made the hit right before the throw. Just a gain of a yard there for Ronnie Brown. And Auburn takes it down to... 3:23 before Auburn or before Virginia Tech, excuse me, got to think stops about, it with a timeout. Yeah, I was going to say you've got to think about taking a timeout immediately, which now they do, but they let a couple seconds roll off of it. Uh, Frank Beamer's team has uh, not taken advantage of many of their opportunities here tonight. Let's take a look, guys, at the FedEx air and ground stats from tonight's game. Virginia Tech. The better of the passing yards, a lot coming on those last couple of drives. As far as the uh, rushing yards go, tonight Auburn with 124 and Virginia Tech held to 76. And that's probably the story of the game. But isn't that ironic? That's exactly opposite of what they've done all year. At the top of the telecast, Mike, we were talking about being mirror teams, very similar in statistics. Auburn has had more passing yards than Virginia Tech. And then it was the other way around, more rushing yards for, uh, or for Auburn, rather, and for Tech. They've had more rushing yards. In the final analysis, you'd have to say basically Auburn's defense just a little better than Virginia Tech's defense. Auburn's quarterback played just a little bit better than Virginia Tech's quarterback. And when we came in, we thought it'd be close. The strength would be similar, but that would be the difference. They're just a little bit better in almost every phase of the game. It's a second down, and it's Ronnie Brown. Just a yard timeout. There. They've got to take a timeout. Virginia Tech uses its last one here with 3.14 to go. That's a frustrated look right there. Let's kind of take a step back, guys, and remind ourselves of where Virginia Tech was this year. All new wide receivers, four freshmen who were playing most of these games. Remember, Marcus Vick was, uh, in the mind of many, the quarterback this year for Virginia Tech, the brother of the great Michael Vick, who played two years at Virginia Tech. Marcus was involved in a couple of incidents off campus, contributing to the delinquency of a minor, reckless driving marijuana possession. He was suspended by the university for the fall semester of 2004. He has apologized, done the right things, and I was told this week that Marcus has registered for classes, so he will be in school and if everything stays on course he will be the quarterback for this team through spring ball and on into the fall of 2005 but given Marcus wasn't here the changes with the defense they lost some good players like D'Angelo Hall you mentioned before going into the ACC these guys were picked sixth in the league they opened two and two lost to Southern California lost by one to North Carolina State but after that Frank Beamer's team rolled off eight in a row one at Virginia at Miami the undisputed king of the ACC this year in their first year in the new league. 
and got to this game here tonight. And got their defense back. You remember how they got blistered and embarrassed by Cal in the bowl game last year. Gave up 500 yards defensively. Got that swagger back. They seem to go from me to to we yes. defensively. And uh, this is a young football team. Boy, they're going to be really good next year. They're out of timeouts now. This is third and seven. Jake Slaughter, the fullback, only carried once this year. Set to lead the way for Ronnie Brown. Campbell adjust the play. Didn't have enough time to adjust it and get it off. So a timeout. Clock's is still taken. rolling. They got to kick that stop. Put about four back on. He's got to put more on the clock. Three yeah. or four seconds. It'll go back to 3:14. No. The timer anticipated it starting. Made a mistake. It should have never started. Mm -hmm. So. They'll get it corrected. Well, Tommy Tupperville on the other side has great respect for Frank Beamer. So the one thing we do together, play golf. We played golf on some of the uh, coaches' trips and some other functions. Tommy was born in Arkansas. You know, his perfect season is not the only perfect season in the Tupperville family. His son Tucker, age 10, first year organized football, ages 10 through 11 football down there in Auburn. They're 7 and 0. They had the first perfect season in the house this year. Tommy got to a lot of the games and that's him. He's one of those guys. He's not sleeping on a cot in the office. And there is Tucker. Tommy gets home gets to Tucker's football games. He's out in the community. He's in the phone book in Auburn. He is the most accessible guy you'll find both sides. Can you ask to work for two better guys than Tommy Tuberville and Frank Beamer. Frank Beamer was a graduate assistant on the staff at Maryland with Jerry Claiborne when I was playing. He coached me and that's uh, that's how long he's been in this game and. I mean, these are two quality guys and both outstanding football coaches. You know, a lot's being talked about with Nick Saban out there, and he is a, a workaholic, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there are two different ways to win championships, and neither of them are wrong. They're just different. Third and seven. Here is Ronnie Brown, tackled from behind by Jim Davis. Can't stop the clock, so it'll run down here to fourth down to about 2.30 on the clock before Auburn has to do something. You talked about Nick Saban. Nick Saban, who was the LSU coach, went to the Miami Dolphins. And uh, today, Les Miles, the Oklahoma State coach, made big news down here as he was hired over in Baton Rouge. Talk about sons and these head coaches. There's Frank Beamer. His son, Shane, has followed his dad into the coaching profession. He is an assistant coach, a defensive back coach over at Mississippi State. I remember when Shane was a, was a walk-on for his dad. It was a long snapper. I was at Auburn. He wrote me a letter. He wanted to be a coach. He says, I know y'all have coached for your dad. I want to coach for my dad one day. Do you think it's good to coach for your dad? Do you need to get away? And I wrote him back. I remember, if you ever get a chance, spend some time coaching for your dad. Football pulls you apart so much. Spend some time together. And so although he's at Mississippi State now, he wants to get back to spend some time somewhere down the road with his father. Fellas, it's not lose sight of the fact that Frank Beamer's still thinking we got a shot here. I know I mean, he does. He's a competitive son of a gun. Mm -hmm. With 2.21 left and out of timeouts, Auburn's going to uh, take the, their timeout here. And Virginia Tech would have to score with a clock drive, a two minute drill drive, and come back and recover an onside kick, kick a field goal, and force overtime. So Auburn's in great position. And guys, the question will be asked for the people who did vote Auburn number one in the AP poll. You're going to watch Oklahoma USC tomorrow night in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Did Auburn do enough tonight to convince some people that they are better than one of those two teams? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm Tommy Tuberville. I give every one of these kids on this field a ring, and I tell them that they're national champions, regardless of what happens tomorrow night. This is an outstanding football team. You know what I say? I say let Auburn and Utah play to see who gets a, a chance at <laughs> USC Oklahoma winner. And let's that go sounds on from like there. A, sounds like a playoff to me. And let's go on from Although there. Although I'll say this, and I haven't said this publicly, this is the first year I think that I've ever said I'm ready for a playoff. I've never felt that way, but I just feel like it's ready. I just don't see enough reasons why an 18 maybe can't work. Just doesn't make sense not to have it. Just the timing is strange. Last year we had no undefeateds. Yeah. This year we could end up with three. Utah, then Auburn, and then the winner tomorrow night. Ten at the line for Tech. Trying to block the punt from Bliss. Once again, he gets it off so quick and not worried about getting this one inside the five. Just uh, live to see another snap. So the clock runs down to 2.13, and Virginia Tech has 80 yards to go. Had to stop watching on him all night, Mike. He's getting it off in 1.6 seconds. That's how he's worked hard on that because he knew the Virginia Tech rush was coming. It's almost unblockable. Yeah, 2.0 uh, is, is, is winnable. 1.6 is incredible. Jason Campbell. Final game in Auburn. 
with the numbers he's put up tonight 11 of 16 189 yards just the one interception but one of the key things was his scramble on the long pass to mix here in the third quarter to keep a play alive and set up the touchdown pass to Devin Aroma should do for the only Auburn touchdown here tonight three field goals one touchdown for the Tigers so now it's up to Brian Randall to hit a big play to keep Virginia Tech alive First down, he's throwing deep. He's got him. Oh, man, breaks free. It's Josh Morgan. Touchdown, Tech. Unbelievable. No wonder Frank Beamer was still saying we've got a chance to win. He's not listening to us. Remember, they felt their season was turned around against Georgia Tech with 544 Woo! left in the game. They scored 20. Two points and won the game, and they said that's when their season turned around. It was the pump fake, fellas, that did it. The pump fake set him loose. 80 yards in 12 seconds for Morgan. Brandon Pace, who missed a field goal earlier. And those couple of field goals, one not kicked and one missed, looming large. 16-13, and now Gavron T. We have an onside kick coming with 2.01 remaining in the game. How does somebody get behind you? It's That's the 101. Mike, it's the pump fake. Here's your guy right here. Whoop, and then go on. But watch the pump fake right here. Boom. Now let it go. Herring bit on it and slid right down the middle was Josh Morgan. Will Herring stop? And Morgan went right by him on the pump fake. Well, I mean, when you're in a prevent situation, you don't bite on anything. There is nothing underneath that can hurt you. It can only help you. You got to stay with your back pedal. Uh oh. And there's still two, more than two minutes to play. 2:01 left. Neither team has a timeout left. If Auburn recovers the onside kick, they have to pick up a first down to close the game out. Pace didn't get the second bounce on the onside kick the last time. They've got both kickers out. Kick in the air and fielded nicely by the tight end, Cooper Wallace. So both times, Virginia Tech never even really got close to getting a chance to recover. And Auburn's tight end hauls it in. Both times, you'll see here, the short, the bounce created a big bounce. You don't want the short bounce quick. You want it to hit the small bounce right 10 yards down the field. Neither of them gave a chance for them to recover. No timeouts left with two minutes left. Auburn could just about use every bit of this clock. You need about 140 to just take a knee and get out of town. You could take all the time down on the clock, punch with 20 seconds. A lot depends on how quickly the ball is remarked. Campbell uses some time. This is the most effective right. way. Takes a knee. That allows the play to play clock to get reset more slowly. If you do that a couple of times, that is enough to not run a play. Now what I was saying as a coach, you're sitting over there looking at your your administrative assistant or your coordinator who's got all the all the stats down to how much lot and you go crazy waiting. Well, did you see that? There was some pushing between an Auburn player and a Virginia Tech player, and the clock has continued to run here, and now they stop it at 131. No flag was thrown, but a delay there in getting the ball remarked for play. Frank Beamer's out on the field. Almost asking for more time left on that clock. See Frank pointing at the clock there? Mm-hmm. How about some Put time, on, time the clock. on the clock? And he's right. It rolls from 131, so they'll be able to snap it with 107 to go. It's over. It's over. Three more knees. This game is over. There's 34 seconds, or 30 seconds, I should say, from that snap until the play clock started. So the first down snap came just inside of two minutes. The third down snap is going to come. They're going to have to punt it. They may have to punt it. It's a minute and five seconds. It's under a minute now. 45. You've got two 25 second clocks left. This is what I was. This is what I was saying to Mike. This is where it's really tough. You wouldn't have been able to in the other situation. Right. The fact that they've come back 
and lost eight or exactly nine yards right, has allowed them enough, and now they're in great shape. They can't. It's over. Now they it's can't done. stop it. I mean, it's that's done. If they just took a knee, it would not have been done. Right. The way they handled it, it will be. And this truly will be the last snap. They've wasted enough time by losing these 12 yards. Last snap is an Auburn Tiger for Jason Campbell. The undefeated season has happened. The first time in the history of Auburn football. 13-0. They can start rolling Toomer's corner. The Auburn Tigers. They may not win a title, but they have won every game in 2004. that Frank Beaver says if I can ever help you Tommy let me know Jason Campbell the MVP of the Nokia Sugar Bowl one touchdown one interception Susie Schuster with the undefeated Auburn coach well actually Mike I'm with Frank Beamer and Frank let's just talk about how your team came back valiantly they fought the whole way what do you tell the young guys back there who looked a bit dejected coming back next year well we uh, we played hard we just didn't play well enough why we did things we dropped balls we didn't make some throws we had too many long plays against our defense miss a field goal but we knew, we always played hard and that's that's uh, you got to take something from that and and this is a good football team Auburn's a good football team and and I wish we just played a little sharper though you started the year against USC you ended against Auburn do they deserve a share of the national title well you know the the BCS is what it is and uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a company guy, and, uh, you know, the, the champion will come from that game tomorrow night. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. A uh, great season, Susie, for Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech. 10 and 3. They lost to Southern California and Auburn. Could be the two best teams in the country, along with NC State. We'll hear from Tommy Tuberville when we come back. Auburn, champion to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Susie Schuster downstairs with the victorious undefeated Auburn Tigers. All right. Thanks very much Mike. Congratulations coach. I mean you look at this season and all it's meant. How do you feel standing here with the winningest season ever in Auburn history. Well it feels great especially for the seniors that you know that this this is a players team. You know we kind of stayed out of the way this year and just let them play and tremendous football game Virginia Tech played great defensive battle. We just made more plays than they did. We talk about this kid to my right Jason Campbell and Jason you came in to Auburn a lot of problems from the get go people doubted you Al Borges just came in he turned things around with you what does it mean to you to wrap up your career like this you know first of all I didn't want to get honor to God uh, you know for bringing me through all this you know, I think this uh, the way I just stayed focused you know I didn't listen to everything that was going on around me you know my team stayed focused and you know they uh, at least my teammates and my coaches depended on me and they all believed in me that's all I needed. Jason Campbell MVP Tommy Tuberville winning his coach in Auburn history back to you Mike. Thank you Susie winning a season they've ever had 13 and 0 Tigers have never been that good in one season. Gentlemen a final thought. Well, well first of all go ahead coach. I, I guess what I kept thinking because I think Frank Beamer said what most coaches would say the BCS will be decided championship will be decided tomorrow night but you know what every one of us needs to watch this team tonight both teams tomorrow night and decide who we think is the best team in America. Auburn, outstanding football team. Frank was right. His team was a little bit sloppy, had the chances, didn't take advantage of them. Give all the credit to the Tigers. Let's sit back, have fun, watch the Orange Bowl tomorrow night. Ryan Randall, 299 yards and a touchdown, a losing effort. Campbell, the MVP. Auburn wins 16 to 13. And all the writers, I hope that y'all, you know, help push for us to have opportunity to be na uh, national champs. Because, you know, people really just don't understand how hard it is to go 13-0. You know, you know, it takes a lot of focus week in and week out. And, you know, I think we, we beat four top 10 teams all year long. We beat four teams that has a 10, a record of 10 or better, and maybe five or six with a record of nine and better. So, you no, know, it's just hopefully that you know people understand. You know, I just hope that y'all uh, can help push the situation. We are one of the best teams in the country. Somebody's going to pick us national champions. That's all we want. We want to be recognized as a good football team. Uh, they're playing a game tomorrow night uh, that's uh, probably going to be a good game. 
they're not either, neither team is better than us. Uh, we'll play them anytime, anywhere. Hey, we beat more teams in more nine games than anybody else in the country. You know, they got two more than say we the national champion. Hey, we 13 and 0 in my mind, as far as I'm concerned. That's just how it is. We take it as we champions. You know, going 13 0, you can't have no better season than that. So we've seen going out like this, and we set a stepping stone for the guys coming back next year. 13 and 0, SEC champ. Undefeated in the SEC, what more can I say? Well, it took a little while to get the celebration started after Virginia Tech grew closer, but it seems to be in full force now. Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, Mark May here, joined by virtually the entire Auburn Tiger team, undefeated for the sixth time in school history, and they finish off a 13-0 season with a 16-13 win over Virginia Tech. Stanley McClover standing here beside me. Stanley, what would you say to those AP voters now? National champions, baby. <laughs> Y'all got to get into it, baby. Y'all got to get into it. Jason, Cam Jason Campbell, the senior quarterback. You've had such a terrific season, Jason, of finishing off your career with a brilliant performance tonight. What do you think you guys have done that should influence the AP voters to vote you guys number one? Well, you know, I think you just look at our schedule. You know, I think we beat four top ten, top ten teams all year. And we beat four teams that have won 10 games or more, so I think that's the fact by itself. But I, I do think, think we deserve to be national champs. Hey, you guys, do you think that you guys, you guys think you should have a playoff this year and play the winner of the Orange Bowl to declare a national championship, the, one, the number one team in the nation? Would you play those guys? We'll, we'll play them any day, any time, in any place, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is Junior, Ro Junior Rose Green here making that comment. You'll play them anywhere. You'll play them next week in a neutral stadium. We'll play them anywhere, anytime, any place, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> you go tomorrow night? Man, we'll do it up tomorrow night, ABC again, <laughs> right here in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jason, talk to us a little bit about from the start of the game, it seemed like it was clear that Virginia Tech's plan was to make you beat them down the field. From the start, especially on third down and long, you came through time and time again to your wide receiver. Yeah, you know, our wide receivers you know, did a great job of getting open. Our offensive line did a great job protecting. You know, I think it was just a team effort. You know, we worked together. We work all, all week long on third down situations. So I think it was a carryover from practice. So, guys, it seemed that at the end of the game, when they scored the late touchdown, that it, that it took the wind out of the sails for a minute. Did, did it bother you a little bit when they scored late to get a little closer? Well, you know, when they scored at the end of the game, you know, I just hope, you know, people who vote don't look at something like that. Cause, you know, I do think that we deserve the opportunity. Cause you just look at our whole season. You know, I've seen the other teams struggle also against some opponents. But, you know, I thought we, we did do our job. And I definitely think we deserve to be national champs. Cause you look at USC, Oklahoma, they had some struggling games also this year. Jason, what has Coach Tuberville meant to this team after everything he went through last year with the attempt to talk to Coach Petrino and the way that he's led this club this year? What's he meant to all of you guys? Well, you know, I think they got a lot to do with my teammates and coaching staff believing in me. You know, they understand the quarterback get a lot of the blame when things don't go our way. And you know, as a quarterback, you got to understand those situations. You know, you can't get discouraged about those situations. You got to keep continuing to fight. You know, I think with my team behind me and my coaching staff gave me an opportunity this year in Coach Borden's offense to spread the ball around to multiple people. You know, just let our athletes play. I don't know what else you can do, guys. 13-0, a great run, a great finish here in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. SEC champions, Sugar Bowl champions, and they hope if the AP voters will cooperate, perhaps a share of the national championship. The Auburn Tigers victorious here in New Orleans.